journey into the shadows this is episode three called the rush of blood we are joining back our parties they are currently resting up after a bit of a fight that they had on the road they have decided after hearing out our dear madame lysel and uh, finding out that one of navin's and uh, Garrus's friends, Christoph, is probably about to do something stupid over in another city. They decided that it was time to leave. They also got additional information about the Shadowfell that they all have some experience with. They have two very long, thin, weird-looking objects uh, that seem to be working as compass needles that are directing them to tablets. They've learned that these tablets are currently protecting the realm, or sorry, the material realm and the Shadowfell from merging together. And that the villain that they met in the first session, uh, Anton Valois, is wanting to fuck with these tablets so that the Shadowfell and the material realm merge together. Now, what we are actually going to do is that we are going to leave our players uh, for a while and we are going to hop off into an echo in the ether. So, what this is, is that it is a slight picture of another part of the world where something is currently happening. And I will simply read, and Sarah can have this up if people want to read themselves as well. <clears throat> we see the massive castle Amas in the center of Redilla, the largest city on Orba. With the hundreds of hall, within the hundreds of halls lives the Sultan Sabrahan the Seventh, ruler of heavens, and has so for the past one hundred and thirteen years. The Holy Darien Dominion and the Kingdom of Altwick have for long been at each other's throats. Twenty-five years ago, Sultan Sabrahan the Seventh, ruler of heavens, was forced into a peace treaty that favored Altwick. Prior to this date, the Holy Darien Dominion had always been victorious in the struggles between the empires. The Sultan has been looking for a way to pay back, pay Altwick back ever since. Our vision speeds down towards the castle, in through the gate and past hundreds of rooms before it comes to a halt in front of a massive double door. Through a crack, we manage to get inside and the sight is seen as horrifying. A dozen young children, both male and female, sit kneeling on a marble floor. In front of them stands the striking man in what looks to be his fifties. His leathery face has a smile on it. Clean white teeth can be seen. However, the smile is not out of kindness. With a slight nod, a figure steps out from the shadows, a sharp knife gleaming in their hands with quick precision he cuts the throats of the tied-up humans. The blood starts flowing out onto the floor. The man, whose mauve cloak could determine him as Sultan Sabrahan VII, ruler under heavens, steps forward into the blood gushing out. After several minutes, no blood is left, and the man standing in the middle of it has visibly become younger. He opens his mouth and speaks to the figure. Prepare for war. We march soon. And there we leave this quick echo in the ether and go back to our characters who are currently halfway across this country. So we will start as we are gathering ourselves from the aftermath of this combat and you are free to do any role playing that you wish. Well, first and foremost, is our employer still alive? Um, you don't know. He rode off. I would like to hop into the back of one of the wagons and begin resting in prepare preparation of using my healing magic to, you know, patch everyone up a bit. Yep. I want to go around and sort of gather everything up if something was taken out. I know someone was like on, on one of the crates and inspecting, make sure everything's in the cart. Yes. And sort of looking over the three wagons that are still here, 
the horses are all good, the goods are all undamaged, and it doesn't seem that there is any problem. Uh, you can probably see as you're kind of surveying, or you hear first, like, uh, the uh, the voice of your employer kind of yelling, Everything okay, Dare? Uh, no. A couple of them are still about threatening us. Uh, give us ten minutes to clean everything up, sir. He kind of looks... You're a damn poor liar, Garris. <laughs> <laughs> I always worth the shot. If you need a break, we can take one. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, a break would be nice. You certain you want to sit next to the smell of dead corpses in the sun, though? As appealing as a suggestion as that might be, we should probably move him. In any case, regardless. Uh, I start uh, just looking through their pockets and just seeing if there is anything of value and uh, I'll start dragging them off. Uh, yes, you can go ahead and roll me four d20s. <laughs> wow! Oh my god! <laughs> Uh, you can roll me one d10. <laughs> this is Goodness. going great, guys. <laughs> Getting it out now. Seven. Getting yeah, it out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, going over the pockets, you find very meager uh, sums. Probably the reason why they are bandits. Or pirates, or corsairs, or whatever you want to call them. You Bandits find... don't carry a hundred gold on them everywhere no, they go? No, unfortunately they don't. You do, however, find seven silver in total on these uh, brigands. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I I take them and uh, march over to, to Morgan and just give them to him and then just continue doing it. I um, kind of look at them and I pocket half and just kind of leave half on the edge intending to give them back at the soonest opportunity. <laughs> Uh, how many was that again? Seven. 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 Yeah. Garrus will look to Navin. Everything seemed to be all right so far. Mm hmm. Mm, sorry. Yes. Am I am saying this. Yeah. None of the horses seem injured. Good seem to be in order. <laughs> We're all one piece. All right. can be asked for one. Bandits are about, but we should should not stay. The carrion will attract other dangers. Not to mention their friends might come calling. True. All right, oh. I owe you another one, I suppose. Let's pack it up. <laughs> okay, you continue kind of moving the corpse out of the way, and then finish the. Uh, the talking and ride the horses down the road. Uh, as you come down, Hamdash kind of looks at you. Well done. I honestly thought we were done for. I know that uh, you're probably tired and you want to rest, but just three hours down the line, there should be a small hamlet in where we can rest. That sounds acceptable to me. Yeah. Let's go. Kind of nods, and you uh, continue riding what would be eastward in the direction. And after a bit more than three hours, you come forward to come to a very small hamlet. You notice that there are a lot of empty houses, as most things are along the Raiders' coast. Especially Morgan, that has lived his life here, know that prior to the influx of pirates and raiders in the Corsa archipelago. People lived here and farmed a lot, but with the raiders getting more ambitious, they have ventured into the uh, land more and more and have forced uh, the uh, Commonwealth and the Asherite to start patrolling the area because there's so many fucking bandits. So most of the people either have gone into the larger cities or they have tried to fortify whatever small hamlet they have to dissuade people from getting to them. Uh, this one seems to just slowly but surely being depleted and there might be 15 people or so living here and uh, the tavern that Hamtush kind of walks up to 
is empty. As he kind of just opens the door, walks in, and walks up to one of the, like, behind the counter, takes out five glasses of ale, and, uh, oh, sorry, it would be seven glasses of ale, because there's two of the uh, riders. Can I just pour some ale? I uh, have taken over this enterprise and use it whenever I go through. Gives a good rest and uh, it's a good place to stash things because we have a look through empty buildings. Uh, the desperate and the poor, I reckon. No. Yes. In any case, this seems like an acceptable place to hold up for the night. Granted, the cots sitting outside do make us a bit of a tempting target, do they not? Yeah, attempting to whom? Fair enough, we have killed a fair number of them, but... Regardless. I'm sure the townsfolk will try and help oh. us from any robbers. They wouldn't want people to be robbed along the way, even if it's not... Even if we are strangers, this town must be dependent on travelers <laughs> having the courage go by. Uh, with how far away we are from sources of civilization, I'd say that we should also keep the magic to a minimum. I would offer to perhaps glamour up a few extra guards, but I'm not sure how well that would be taken if anyone were to see what happened. I've been through here many a time, and in all honesty, I don't think that they give too many shits. As long as you don't disturb them, they won't disturb you. They're content on trying to harvest whatever they can to get enough money to move the fuck away. Because <laughs> there's no future here. Hmm. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know of any tailors in town, would you? Town? It's 15 or so people living here. This isn't a town. <laughs> I mean, sure, if you go to one of the mothers, they might know how to sew some shit up for you, but <sighs> when you said that you're a, a wizard, I thought that you might be a man of intelligence. <laughs> but yet you can't see further than your nose. What do you need mended? Well, to be f it's not a matter of mending. I need some commoner's clothes for the next couple of days or so. Mm. <clears throat> yes. There's rooms upstairs. Should be a bedroll in all of them, and uh, mm. you can do whatever you want. Better than nothing, I suppose. Better than a cold night outside underneath the damn uh, wagons. True, true. Oh, um, over like the three hour journey is in the back of the cart enough for it to be a short rest? Short rest. Yes, absolutely. Cool, then I would have enough to cast at least two cure wounds on everyone. Yep, on everyone, damn. I mean, you can also take a short rest by using your hit die. Well, I get... You get them back, yeah. Mana every hour, and I have enough to cast it three times. So. You wouldn't be able to take three short rests. Like, we're not going to abuse the facts of the warlock like that. Like, there, there is a limit to how much, like, you can regain, like, there would be, because otherwise it would literally just be, you know, casting your spells out, taking an hour, casting all your spells out, taking an hour, and then you could literally take, cast 24 times the amount that was, you know, meant. Well, up to technically 12, I think. Yeah, depending on how long the short rest is, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So, so I, I prefer us not to, like, kind of... I, I know that it's meant in healing, but also all of the changes mm -hmm. done have been, like... So it's two short rests a day at max, if you have Garris, the time and the ability to. Garrus okay. is looking barely scratched from what you can see from him. Yeah, also. you took nothing, did you? It's like, like one damage. point of damage. One. Huh. <laughs> one point of damage, total. Yeah, Navin isn't well, doing I can... too hot, but yeah. Well, I can definitely get one for myself, Navin, and Cohen. Yeah, yeah. Cohen doesn't say shit, I'm assuming, but looks fucked up. So I will cast for myself Correct. first, <laughs> then Cohen, then Navin. Yep. Out of, curi out of curiosity, boss, what are we transporting exactly? 9, 9, and 11. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, some luxury commodities. 
mostly since we're going to uh, ash rites it's a lot of charms and holy wood and things that you can build charms out of it's some um, crypt stone to be used against all of the ghasts ghouls and ghosts that they fight and uh, he kind of smiles might be some things in there that should be there too <laughs> tempting target then I mean we don't really look like uh, somebody <laughs> that would carry a lot of uh, worth especially with four guards yes well if it wasn't for these four guards, as you put it, where do you think you'd be now? Oh, no, I don't, don't miss just, I am truly grateful that you <laughs> are here to stop them. But what I mean is that you don't look like guards. And whilst it might make look like an easy target, it's uh, also, you know, usually the amount of effort you have to put in is often what kind of reward you get out. So <laughs> if it's an easy fight, then it's probably not much worth Sound logic. The strongest box is the one that people try to break into the most. <laughs> That's why you never put your valuables in there. No, you put your valuables in a shoebox next to the strong box. Kama smiles at this. Yes, indeed. Well, I'm going to take myself a uh, few rounds and then I'm going to go sleep. We're going before the break of dawn tomorrow. Make sure you're up. Right. If you're not, we're leaving you. Sort of give him a wave as he goes to drink. I guess he's, he remains at the bar or whatever. No, he would, like, go and take, like, three glasses and then walk upstairs. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm staying by the caravan. Yep, you are what you want to sleep outside? Yep. Yep. Even if I'm sleeping inside? Actually, yes, because, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that is what I'm doing automatically, just without mm -hmm. thought, so... I would be sleeping inside as well. Yeah, inside for me as well. Okay. Jairus would take a few moments in between just setting up, making sure his books are in order, cleaning the one scratch that he got to his uh, shoulder, and walk over see if he can find a good opportunity to speak to Morgan. Well, that was a eventful afternoon certainly was. <sighs> well, if we're going to be traveling together, it's probably best we get to know each other a little more. What's the story between you and Cohen, anyway? Traveling companions. He was an assistant on an archaeological expedition I was on at one time. We just sort of stuck together after that. Fair enough. Seems a reasonable way to meet somebody, but... I don't know. He's a bit odd, isn't he? More than a bit. But it's part of his charm, I think. Yes, fair enough. One Very thing responsible really, as well. One thing that should be addressed between us is how we are touched by the Shadowfell. You're already somewhat familiar with the events surrounding me, but I have no context for you. Uh, I believe the best way to put it would be I encountered a relic that was touched by the same plane. And you're studying it out of academic curiosity, or...? Mostly. I... I just truly despise not knowing something, you know? Not really, to be honest with you. I think there are some things in this world that it's better not to know. Well. Tends to pursue... Uh, mostly out of spite. <laughs> I just can't leave stones unturned. It's just not in my nature. Spite, I can understand. Friend. Honestly, infuriates me seeing all these little sections of the world where entire fields of the sciences are just... Completely taboo. <sighs> of weaving, especially. Could do so I much good in the world. And a lot of evil to accompany it. 
But I suppose oh. the magics are only a tool, as with all things. An excellent point. Is a sword evil? Only if its builder is. To add to your personal knowledge, like for place, because this is something that I rule differently in, in most cases. Um, you know, like necromancy is also used to be like just very evil and such. But in my world, necromancy is dependent on the user, meaning mm -hmm. that if you are uh, using like animate dead or reviving corpses, they actually become your alignment. So a lot of the magic is truly like what the user wants out of it. Even so you allow like, white necromancy? Yes. Uh, sorry, so I allow hmm, what necromancy? Uh, white. I'm, yeah, I'm not white. Sure if it was part of someone's. I'm not sure uh, if it's part of someone's homebrew, but they would called yeah. good necromancers white necromancers. Sure, I, I can go with that. It's just like necromancy, uh, just like any magic, is like dependent mm -hmm. on the user's will on the magic because how it works is that like you have you will draw magic or arcane spellcasters draw magic from something called the flux which mm -hmm. is like another like sub dimension of the world where which is just filled with magical energy which you like open small portals out of that is invisible pull out the magic and then you cast your spells mm -hmm. and that is influenced by like your own nature so you open like to different places and pull like different stuff i would suppose mm -hmm. it is uh, so you know the more good you are the more good natured flux you pull out and the more evil you are the more evil natured flux which can also depending on how far to each end you go have impact on the magic you're casting mm -hmm. so it's uh knights of the old republic force powers <laughs> very interesting sorry go ahead lord dump but regardless if there is knowledge in the world that can subjugate the an entire people or wipe them off the face of the planet or possibly destroy it. I'm not sure that knowledge is fit for any man to possess. Yes, but I prefer to think of it this way. If one possesses the knowledge to subjugate, one possesses the knowledge to resist subjugation as well. And if those those with bad intentions are going to find this stuff out one way or another, and by the same token, those with good good intentions should at least know how to fight it. Perhaps, Sarah, you have to mute yourself when typing. Oh, but for us, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't help us. <laughs> Maybe raise your microphone slightly. <laughs> there little... we go. There we go. Perfect. Ideal. <laughs> Brian has to do the same as well because his keyboard is also used. <laughs> well, I suppose we'll have to agree to disagree on the matter. By the way, you're not a spy, right? For whom? Antoine the Shadowfell. I can either. As far as I'm aware, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, pleasant dreams, I suppose. I'm off this... to harass a peasant for the media belongings. I would advise against such things, but you do you, I suppose. Gyrus will go around, uh, seeing if he can't buy a quick outfit from anybody that seems to live here. Uh, I think that's probably not feasible. No, 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 no. Other way around. Probably if you pay money. Yeah. Uh, uh, he because he doesn't have a sense of what things are worth. He'll offer silver for what they do. I mean, I, 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 I am pretty certain. I mean, is it just Garris himself that doesn't know, or? I mean, I, I'm assuming that you haven't really had to care for pu purchasing your own things, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Commoners' clothes. How expensive can they be? They're for commoners. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they would, like, refuse uh, and say that a minimum of sil seven silver. He will pay it off. Yep. Awesome. 
Okay. So, with that, we are going to do a fast forwarding of the otherwise rather boring travel. What is available in my campaign is that people are able to uh, do a lot of different downtime activities. It's kind of bare minimum at the moment, especially when they're traveling like this. So we're just going to go through. I know what all of you want to do, but I want you to kind of explain how you are doing it. And we'll start with Morgan. Like, what is he doing to further his knowledge in Arcana? <clears throat> I would be studying and doing my best to interpret the Grimoire of Shadows. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just, yeah, because we haven't really yet yeah, talked about the book too much, and especially, like, with you not... Yeah. Uh... It's... It's very different from anything else that you have read. It's a little bit, I suppose, like, uh, I believe it's the uh, Odyssey that is written without, you know, uh, periods and just like straight lines of thoughts, basically. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that. And when you are studying this, could you give me an arcana as well? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Stream of cut... I Hmm? Uh, don't worry about it. Not important. He doesn't know anyways. Nine. Oh, come on. You Dude. swear. You swear that, you know, you, you read something and then you turned back. You swear on your life that a page, like, changed what was written as you were reading it. That's not unnerving at all. Um... But you do gain the, I believe we said, 15 days were able to have downtime. Can somebody double check? I believe you said 17. 17 days. You said travel. 300, actually. No, I said 17 <laughs> days of traveling. That. Out of those 17 days, I believe. Uh, you will have, no, 17 days about downtime out of these 17 days. Yeah, 12 days of full activity. So you will be able to work for 12 days, spectering this. Cool. Cow, Cowan. <laughs> Sorry, that's your, not your name. You're hey. not Cow. Uh, Cowan, uh, how would you try to... So how it works with the, the proficiency, it is a little bit different than it would be with expertise. Because expertise is furthering something that you already know. However, um, practicing proficiency, you need a teacher, usually. Um, however, what I, because of your own line of work, I will let this one slide for the first week. Usually, okay. uh, so if we shake this, usually you, you need to find a tutor to kind of get started. So like every week that goes by, you're going to have to find a tutor. So okay. I will give you these 12 days for free. Yeah. And then from that point, you will need to every seven days of uh, uh, training, yeah. you will have to find somebody to teach you and pay them. So okay. how would you practice this proficiency? Uh, we said uh, sleight of hand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, just so I'm on board. Um, I would say that I, you know, as we're walking beside the carts and stuff like that, I would, you know, try to be on the lookout for different kinds of stones or uh, or clay, and I would just sit and just try to do my mm -hmm. best, uh, you know, carving out uh, different kind of things uh, from it. And um, yeah, I, I think yep. I think that's what I would do. Yeah. Awesome. So during these uh, 12 days, you do get several smaller, like, statues. Like, the first ones, they look like shit. They are just, like, clumps and, uh, you know, smiley face, two dots and the yeah. smile. <laughs> they get a bit more detail because, like, usually you used to work with the chisel and yeah. hammer on the larger part, uh, like, statues. And so it's like, working with your hands like this is different. You have the idea, but it's very different. Navin, you wanted to uh, 
four train inch of this. So, right. Yes, exactly. Yes. Go ahead. So, so, so essentially what you see during the days, you would see Navin sort of leading the horse, you know, mostly riding the carriage, sort of, so to speak. But then every once in a while, maybe doing a quick stop or just glancing down, looking at the different like the bushes, the flowers, seemingly looking for tracks, trying to learn the different nuances of an environment that he is not very used to. Living in the wild, maybe, but not these types of plants. And maybe trying a berry or a small part of a mushroom to sort of see if it's poisonous or not, or if it's dangerous in those types of things. Learning more about the local flora and fauna. Uh, yep. And... Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And lastly, we have Mr. Garris, who wants to learn some spells from his book. Now, you have a choice. You can do it like a riskier way where you have a, uh, a slightly less probability of researching a spell or you can take it the safe way where you have a guaranteed and of course there's a difference in how many days i would say like because you are an intelligent fella i think that like to be certain of researching a first level spell you would have to use four days to be certain to research a second level spell, you would have to use seven days. You can, however, use half the time, and then there would be a DC of 15 Arcana that you would have to pass, uh, 14 maybe. So you have a slightly better chance than a 50-50 if you want to take less days. I'll start off by taking... Do I get to pick the spells that I'm researching, or is it going to be something that I roll for? I think we we can come up with an agreement, maybe one where you can pick, or you can ask, like, like it depends on, would you want it to be random? Because as I described, this is a very weird book with a lot of different spells. So we can have it because I still want you to be able to cast some spells. Let's see. That's... I feel like looking up a particular spell should take more time in that instance, whereas mm. I'm, I'm okay with it being somewhat random. Maybe if I could yep. pick a school to research. At least mm. then... Like your... Yeah. Or, hmm. So I think then you can take a longer amount of time and you'll know what kind of spell it is that you like, what school it is where you can take a shorter period of time and it will be random. For now, uh, let's take a... five days for first, seven days for second, half the time for risky. Let's take seven days just to make sure I have a new second level spell. That's okay. alright, dude. You can... I'll make that... Give me an Arcana roll. So what we'll do is... Yeah, you give me an Arcana roll. Depending on the Arcana roll, you can spend to shoot. So that's a shitty Arcana roll. <laughs> uh, so you can spend to add a 25% addition to that. So you can spend uh, nine days if you want. It's 25. Nine days and you can choose the school or seven and it will be random. Yeah, 15 days if I remember right. So 12. That'll leave me our seven for random then. Okay, seven for random. Roll me a uh, d8, please. Six. Okay. Roll me a d8 again, please. Eight. Ooh. Great, cool. And I will spend the remaining of my time riskily working up some first level spells. Okay, so I would say then you have two days each. We said seven days, so nine, eleven. I'll give you three. So give me three Arcana rolls. You're going to need to beat... Uh... Okay, so two spells. Then give me two more D8s. Okay. Three. That's a one and a unrecognized command. <laughs> That's okay. a one and a three. with this on. Also, Cloud of Daggers is not a big uh, 
No, unfortunately not. Roll me a d10, please. Sorry for all the people coming in and just seeing us doing weird rolls and uh, not knowing what the fuck is going on. Uh... But they don't like just seeing dice with no context rolling. <laughs> and to clarify, GM, can I cast the spells if they're outside of my chosen schools? If they're in the public? I will have to do some thinking on that. Um, there might be like a slight deficit to it. Uh, roll me a so, sorry for the other one. Ooh, sanctuary. Uh, D4 on the other one. That's a one. Yeah. Cool. There are your new spells. All right, looks good. Thanks, Jim. Let us move over to Riverfetch. Hmm. As you spend the 17 days in total, it would be 15 more days from after the fight. Oh, sorry. You ride past the uh, Wailing Woods. You have it like almost always on your right side, which is like a cauldron almost. It is a large as valley where you can see trees kind of sticking up from the top and almost being like down into the bottom. Um, you you all have heard about this place or Asherites in general. Uh, Asherite is uh, a very problematic place where long ago, the during the Age of Agony, uh, the goddess of death, Vona, retreated into her own realm. She stepped away from the halls of death and did not let anybody enter, meaning that if you were to have your head chopped off, you wouldn't die. You would continue living during those circumstances that you were put in. Um, however, because she was gone for such a long time, some people withered away completely. Their spirits now stuck in the ether, kind of in between and not able to be uh, ever salvos. I don't even know the word for it. Helped, perhaps. Um, some of them, who still had bodies by the end and died when Vona came back, were buried in the Wailing Woods. So hundreds of thousands of corpses were brought from all of Orba to this specific place and buried. They then planted trees across the entire valley, which used whatever nutrition in the bodies that were left and grew large. However, it completely fucking backfired as everything there became haunted and the grounds are just completely cursed or unhallowed and from the wailing woods spirits of very malevolent forms kind of flows out into what is asherites those who are asherites like the people of asherite are specialized in the commune with the dead and the knowledge of spirits but also the exercising of spirits i would say and at the moment, it is a very shitty place to be in because they don't have any money and don't have any, the money to pay people to help them get rid of their spirits problem. And that is where you are heading. So as you come around on the 17th day during the morning, you can see this river that you have been right, uh, kind of seen coming it's straight into the middle of the city. A uh, large waterfall maybe... 150, 100, 200 feet or so, just gushes down below and pushes out into the middle of the city. And you can see several buildings along this river is utilizing the power of the river. There are large water wheels that are spinning, and you can, from this distance even here, churning, um, chiming, and hitting from uh, whatever businesses, I suppose, uh, that are using them. The city itself is mostly located on the southwestern side of the uh, river, but there are certain like other locations as well. Uh, everything almost on the like northern side seems to be a lot nicer than the southern side. 
you would enter from here. I will use Mr. Navins' token unless you guys split up. So as uh, you can all put yourselves back to full HP as well because you're not going to be anything. Um, as you come riding in, uh, Hamtash kind of comes up and uh, hands you all a uh, pouch of silver, which you have so delightfully earned. He upped the payment to five pieces a day, meaning that you will be getting a, a whooping 85 silver per person. Ooh. You enter this cobblestone part of the town, which at the outer edges has been, you know, slowly retaken back by nature as it's crawling its way up on the cobblestones. There are several buildings. It seems to be an inn and two either like fancier buildings that can be perhaps a noble house. It could be some sort of a uh, like city hall. And then in between there is a market, which then uh, Hamtash kind of rides up and asks you to put the uh, carts in a nice row. Kind of not to all of you. I'm happy that uh, we didn't run into any more troubles on our road. Fuck me, we'd come into contact with any of those fucking spirits. Wouldn't know what to do. Yes, it is a rather unpleasant encounter. Mm. But fortunate smile on us today. Kind of odds. Well, here's your payment. Five a day, as we said. Total of 85. Don't spend it all at once. And uh, as we said, make sure that you don't hide it in the most obvious place. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here for maybe two weeks or so. Then I'm heading out. I'm heading uh, north, I think, to uh, either Lamenta or uh, Coronogus. If you're still here and you want some more Reezy coin, you can always tag along. If not... I hope you have a great life. See you again. Thank you very much. Well, that's done and over. Hmm. Uh, I, Co or uh, I, I look very confused bef uh, between Morgan and this guy. Uh, I don't really know where to go. That's, that's kind of. Like, the message I'm sending out, I'm like, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> Navin sort of looks back, and like, I, I, Navin sort of like walks away, like, you know, sort of to gauge the town. Uh, probably walking uh, next to Garrus. Oh, no, are look, you coming, or...? Okay, my headset decided to stop working for about 15 no. seconds, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that I'm looking at you and uh, the merchant and just trying to decide where I'm supposed to be or, you know, not decide, but, you know, kind of understand what I'm supposed to do. I'm not quite sure either, because in trying to fix that, I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, does the merchant, uh, ha has he just gone? Uh, he started to unpack his wares. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm, like, trying to... But if Nar... Uh, Nar uh, let's see, Navin, you do ask me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then in yeah. that case, I start going with you guys. I, I, I yeah. start, like, um, or ha helping him, and then I'm just going back to you. Yeah, it's like the reflex of like you know you start walking and then you look behind like is yeah. Everyone coming? <laughs> yeah. I think you've all come to the conclusion that Cohen at the moment is almost completely incapable of making this decisions for himself. Yeah. He seems to be like whenever there's a choice, it would just be like uh, I'm not if you've seen the Good Place, it would be like uh, Shidiana Gonye yes. when he's trying to make a choice of like it could be literally. Blue hat or brown hat, and <laughs> make the choice. And know. that is what Cohen is yeah. uh, is at the moment like can't make any choices. Yeah. So I think you've all kind of come into the the role of just like come now, Cohen. <laughs> it's yeah. this way, or you know, it's yeah. this drink, it's this. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. So where to? Uh, you have no idea about anything, almost about this place. When, uh, like, what were we like two, three ish, four years ago, when Morgan went through here, it was like a lot larger and more livelier than it is now. Even though there were more like influence of the Commonwealth, you see. The ghost behind you trying to get to you <laughs> no um loud tire screeching noises actually oh. mm. um <laughs> sounds like an awful ghost like <laughs> yes <geez>. um <laughs> you do know that there is a mage guild and probably there where you would have been last time they aren't very good at what they do they aren't very accommodating they aren't very nice either and they're mostly focused on the occult more than anything but you know that essentially. the League of Five is what it is called. And uh, when you were there, it was uh, uh, Master Emrin that was the, uh, the like, headmaster. Master Emrin. So, where to next? <laughs> I don't suppose you'd be able to get an audience with the Graven Rose, would you know them? So they I... don't live here. Hmm. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it would be Christoph's uh, family, which is the, the Gravenroth, uh, which would be in uh, um, Old um, Oldberg. However, he has been through here, and you know that uh, because this is the place that Christoph was going to when he went off, like right after he, you and him came back to Oldberg, and right. he met up with his sister. So this is where he was heading. But where, he, you don't know. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. By the way, the compasses are still pointing in the same place that they were before, right? Let me do some. Shooting. That would be good to take another measurement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See. Nope. One of them has changed the direction. Which one? The uh, the one that you got from. Uh... <laughs> That's you. Oh, thank My you. favorite the character. One, the one that you got from Madam <laughs> myself. That makes sense. Interesting. All right, mark mm -hmm. that down. This, yeah, I mean, you guys are going to have to mark this down somehow on your own. So you oh. are currently in River Verge. The one that you yourself have still points this way. And then the other one now points this way. I believe. Interesting. So we are now closer. The one in Bargos is no longer the one that's that one. from us. Yeah. Hmm. Let me make a note of where it's pointing. So. I feel like we should draw like very light lines on the map to see where the. Like, pick one color for the one that points towards the one in Bargos and one color for the one that points towards whichever one is farthest. I don't know if World 20 support permanent lines like that. Uh, I does. mean, it does. It would have to be like the polygon lines, however, which would look something you know, like this. A standier. All right, I have it down. Cool. Yeah, but we were in the other city. They were both pointing towards the same direction. Yeah, they were both pointing towards Barnos. So. They what? Interesting map puzzle. <laughs> so, as you're standing in the middle of the market square, the morning seems to kind of be getting going, and there is a lot of people coming in from all the directions. They seem to be putting up wares of various sorts around you in stalls. Some ask you kindly to kind of move out the way because you're in their spot or so. I believe that there would be a few even asking if you're lost uh, because you're you're literally standing like 
gawking almost like the four of you just like. <laughs> uh, Perhaps we should find an inn to so rest our legs and see if we can find some information about the locals and what's going on. Seems a reasonable choice. Seems smart. Sort of oh, grab the hiding. Yeah, 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 like the the closest sort of merchant. Yeah. Uh, or uh, like just walk... patron or whatever. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, you you walk up to uh, to somebody selling uh, uh, what seems to be bottles, uh, mm -hmm. just like various like glass bottles, and mm -hmm. kind of looks at you. Um, very nervous fella, uh, just like mm -hmm. uh, um, inns or, or, or taverns. There's, there's only one inn. Uh, ah, please, it's... please point the direction. It'd be more. He kind of like turns and. Uh, points to the building that's right there. Uh, <laughs> He's like, ah. It, it's right there. And then we... Uh, yeah, sorry. No. What do you sell, if, if I may ask? Oh, I sell uh, bottles. He kind of mm -hmm. like picks up a, uh, a bottle made into a, uh, a dragon uh, mm -hmm. of orange uh, color yeah. and then just kind of shows it's very pretty. You can... Yeah. You know, soap, uh, perfume, uh, potions. Yeah. And then like, he picks up another one, uh, yeah. which would be like a, a beautiful uh, horse. And, yeah. Like, yeah, he just has like all of these various what, ones. Yeah. What's uh, the most rudimentary, like smallest one I can see? <laughs> he would like have like just regular vials on yeah. the uh, on there as well. And he kind of sees you going, oh, uh, you want a vial instead? Yes. yes, it would be interesting. How how much do these go for? Can I ice you up and down as if though yeah. you're not trying to see if you're someone yeah. that he can fuck over yeah. or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how many do you want? Well, as you, I travel a lot and don't need. I should show I don't have any at the moment, but I've been always been curious about them. Ah. He kind of like uh, pulls up, uh, it like goes underneath the little stool that he has and pulls up a belt. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see like it has a, uh, you know, it's it's a belt yeah. where like different uh, potions can be stuck in, uh, in yeah. and like you have like various sizes. This one is very, very simple to carry. Protect it is feel. And like, as you see, like this is good craftsmanship. Like this oh, is yeah, the kind yeah. of leather that you guys would, uh, when you were working back at Hammerfells, this is the kind of leather that you would use for uh, sheets. Yeah. And it is the same like hardened leather. So it is very hard to like break things through. Yeah. And uh, you will see that it would have the uh, like slots for five potions of mm. uh, like normal size. Hmm. Would it also work for things like alchemist's fire or alchemical yes. silver? Yes. It seems a bit much if I only need oh. one to start with at the very least. But right. how much uh, would how much would just one vial be? I'm sure I could vial? keep it safe you enough. Gentlemen, uh, one silver. Ah, well, uh, take a silver. Happy yep. to do business with you. I right, give him a silver. Are we yeah. all with him uh, on this? Yeah, you're all very kind of listening. And yeah. how yeah. much would the belt be? Belt and five. Vials would go for kind of things. Well, can you throw in some oil alongside it? Excuse you, this is my deal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you oh. sell anything to go in the vials as well? That is actually a good good question. No, j j j just the vials. But my good friend, he kind of points over to a stall on the other side, uh, where you would see like uh, larger caskets. With like text on them, like plaques on them, where it would you know say like oil, alchemist fire, and like things like that. He can fill them up for you, and I have. And he pulls up like two of these potion <laughs> belts. More, if you want. I'd like a belt. I'll take one as well. Can I also? Belt is on its own in eight, but filled with five for only twelve. Um, yes. Meanwhile, can can I? Uh, w w once he showed these uh, intricate bottles and stuff, I am just yeah. so enamored in it. I'm like, 
I, oh. I, I'm just staring at it. I'm just trying to <laughs> consider how the hell he's made these things. Like, I've never yep. seen this kind of workmanship, mm -hmm. or I, I've always been intrigued. So I'm just staring there like yep. a wine dying child. Just nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Morgan, how does the spell mending work exactly? You offered to do it to my clothes earlier. I believe it reconstructs whatever the shape of the object was prior to a few seconds, correct? Not precisely. It could mend a, it, each casting of it can mend a single break or tear as long as it's not any longer than about yay. And I hold my hands roughly a foot apart. I do require in that case then, how do these vials break exactly, sir. Do they shatter? Do they make a few large pieces? <laughs> he kind of smiles for himself, very like gleefully. Does it? Does it? No, no, no. no. Toss it. Toss it up in the air. Ding! Ding! <gasps> Ding! <laughs> Wow, that's actually quite impressive. I'm gonna cast catapult and just throw it against the <laughs> like as hard as you can. Just like, but we would shatter with enough force, and you just <laughs> <laughs> it just shatters in like a thousand small pieces as you just like threw a. <laughs> a nail bomb, and you could see him like stand there like. Oh. <laughs> I'm assuming you did it on one of yours as well that you had just purchased. <laughs> yeah, I, I, He's I, like, uh, I will give him a silver for the glass <laughs> vial. Be like, takes the silver, <laughs> puts it underneath the counter. Uh, yes, uh, enough force will shatter it, but they can hold up to 50 pounds of pressure without <laughs> breaking. And this is why we think before we act. <laughs> no. no, it would be it like a hundred pounds of pressure at least. So a good throw then, or perhaps a he magical kinda, catapult. He kind of takes it, and I think that he would probably have a weight there as well. So he would pick up like a, a weight that's probably twenty or so uh, kilos, mm. and kind of just drop it, and he just <clears throat> off. And how did you make these? These are fascinating. <laughs> Trade secret. He smiles. The workmanship is impressive. I, I actually look up at him and <laughs> I wink. Just and then that's, that's all I do and I continue yeah. studying it. <laughs> Could I actually have three extras? Do you want these? And he kind of, you know, uh, gestures towards the, the spectacular ones of various uh, arts or... There. As much as I would enjoy that, <laughs> I can't really afford those. Just the simple ones for me. But I will keep you in mind next time I'm looking for a gift for a friend. Kind of nods and pulls up another three. I'm not sure if this is appropriate or not. I'm hoping to have something that actually breaks but shatters into very large shots. So my friend here, your seven, can actually piece them back together after the fact. Well, you wouldn't happen to have any glass that worked in that manner, would you? Now Tim has to think, does he actually? I decided um, to break it, sir. Don't ruin seven, my art. Time and I set your hair on fire. <laughs> A fair point, my friend. Sorry. He would kind of shake his head. Uh, roll me a d100, please. I would say you need a 62. No, I'd be willing no, to pay it. No. Damn it. He kind of shake. Bottle. Just go down to the bar and get three things of whiskey. Yeah. Be cheaper. You need <laughs> You, you, you missed uh, what's, uh, a general trader here yesterday. But uh, I, I only sell my own craft. Your workmanship is very fine. Thank you. He smiles at this. I will take the belts with uh, five miles. Yep, so That's 12. That's a lie. 13, technically. <laughs> yeah. Thirteen for you because yes, you <laughs> did whoosh one. <laughs> I just want to get directions to a pub and give him like some money out of pity for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I suppose we're off, and I start heading towards the the inn where he pointed. Could you just roll me a charisma, Kevin? Yep. 
<laughs> yes, I can. Uh, let's see, just straight oh, charisma. Oh no, not charisma. Yep. Just charisma. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, hey! <laughs> it's paying off. All our natural ones He's are coming adorable. back. He's <laughs> adorable. <laughs> Why is it minus one plus one though? What the heck? That I don't know. That is um, weird. It's. Yeah, it's minus one. So it's weird. We'll fix it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I no, no, no. It is supposed it's to be correct. minus two. No, it's it's the proficiency. Usually, it should be minus one, but it oh. yeah. So it just yeah, it looks weird. So he kind of looks at you and smiles, and because of your your feature from your background, he kind of sees into you for a bit and kind of like understands and. The one that you would be, uh, be have been looking at the most, uh, of course, I'm gonna do this because I know you as a person, a unicorn one. <laughs> he, uh, yes. he kind of like slides it over <laughs> and kind of just gives you a nod and oh. a smile. Hmm. You can have it. Uh, are, 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 uh, are you yes. sure? Kind of nods. Oh, th thank you. And yeah, I I, I hold yep. it as is, as if yep. it's it's not know. very big. Like it would probably be like the size of my phone in length, yeah. and then well, probably so it's I'm like carrying it yep. like it's a newborn baby or whatever. Yep. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I mean, it, apparently they hold the uh, hold the big crash. Well, I don't care. I'm not gonna drop it. <laughs> no. Uh, I'd like to head over to the um. Alchemist, he mentioned. Two, two seconds. Was there anything else you wanted right. to say to him or do? Uh, yeah, I think actually by this I'm not used to this, so I'm gonna slide over at least, uh, yeah, um, ten silver at least. And, and he would push them back. Okay. Well, <laughs> what what's what's your name, sir? sir? Can I smile? Hara. Okay, th thank you. And I'm hmm. barely like holding tears in my eyes. I'm really <laughs> like, this is so nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yes. You head over to the alchemist. Is uh, Garrus following suit? Yep. Okay. What do you guys want? Uh, how much for Alchemist's Fire? A lot. You can see the prices here, most of them, and you can just uh, pick off yeah. whatever it is that you Oof. want. Yeesh. I mean, usually it's 50 gold. Now it's a little bit less. I don't see oil on this list. Am I? I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, right. cool. it's right there. Yes, oil is usually from O. Know, at the bottom there, uh, before what? P after M. What? Right, you, right. Don't you Where know the alphabet? The L L L M and the P. Yeah, M is after Q. Right. It's difficult. Come on. Lemon mop. What's the B? The B. Three S seventy five B. Bronze. Bronze. I thought it was copper. Uh, yes, but Tim has had a problem in the continuity, where sometimes, like when he first started oh. doing this. He wrote it as bronze, but then not to fuck with people too much, he went back to uh, copper. So some of them are in copper, some of them are in B. It's the same thing. Copper, bronze, they're okay, all different from different sure. places. Yeah. The B is silent, and then it's a C. <laughs> <laughs> I will buy five flasks of oil. Yep. On my part. I think that's how much the belt holds, right? Yes. So I think you would probably get a little bit of a discount if you're doing that. Uh, let me just double check. It would be 18 silver and 75. Yeah, you would get it for 18 silver. We'll spend 18 silver. Wait, yeah, no, yep. Mm -hmm. 55, that leaves me with 57 silver. Cool. Yep. Um... Do you use the Xanathar's Guide rules for crafting health potions? 
you as a PC need to have like proficiency in that sort of things. Like it's Alchemist something tools. that unless you aren't like, do do you have proficiency in alchemist tools as a character? We actually, it, we actually forgot. We, we meant to get my proficiencies before session one and then cool proficiencies <sighs> never came up again. So I don't actually have any of those. I would mean to talk to you about that. <laughs> And you mean that you have waited now until the session to kind of catch me? It actually off just now occurred to me. It, <laughs> I, that wasn't intentional. And you didn't take languages instead? Because uh, you have no. a shit ton of languages, I'm pretty certain. Um, that was just the two that I got from... It was the two from my race and two from a high intelligence score. Okay. Uh, then, let's see. I'm trying to think, would it really make sense for you to have proficiency in alchemy supplies? I was thinking about it, and my reasoning would be yes, because you, um, in archaeology, acid is often used mm -hmm. to dissolve, like, copper yeah. patina without damaging the underlying yeah. thing. I can, I can definitely or... understand that. Um sure you can have the proficiency however you do not at the moment have alchemist tools which you can use and i'm not yeah, certain... I was going to ask him if he had any equipment for sale i think that he would have since he is an alchemist uh, i don't think that i have written the price for the tools in here but i'll i'll find the tools in a moment um as for i'm not certain exactly how it's written in the uh um, Sanathar's guide, but I can look it over when we do uh, decide to kind of get that going. Or we can it's pretty it. simple. In Sanathar's, it's one day, 25 gold, and access to materials. Uh, yes, probably something similar. So I usually go with half, silver. I usually go with half cost, and then there is a chance, depending on like how mm -hmm. difficult it is to make, there's a chance to fuck it up, and it's like a chance if you fuck it up real bad, you fuck up and you don't get any money back. If you fuck up just a tiny bit, you just lose a little bit of money and uh, maybe mm -hmm. one ingredient, like one ingredient or so. And then if you succeed, depending on how good you succeed, you know it can also get more potent. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's there's that. Um, but unless anybody has anything to do right here and right now, I think that we should take just a quick break and do some toilets, and then we'll get back. <laughs> Yes, That's we'll good. do some yeah, toilets, I just, I just, and then we'll be right Do back. some toilet. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to buy um, three flasks of oil to leave two separate for my own use. Yeah. All right, so uh, do some toilets, everybody in chat as well, and uh, we'll be <laughs> right back. <laughs> See you soon.
Welcome back. I almost called everybody nerds after Sarah's uh, very <laughs> nice character that he told me about that she named Nerd when she drew a blank. And now I'm just putting her out there on the spot and making her feel awful because that is the kind of person and DM I am. And you are lucky <laughs> not to be in my games because I would harass you until you feel very sad. And then, no, of course not. Um, help us. My address is one, two, three, help, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to safe words. Um, <laughs> we are currently in the city of River Verge where the players have arrived on the 11th of Reaping. It would be like uh, August, late July for us-ish. Um, they are currently doing some shopping before, hopefully at least, they will do what they came here for, which is to find any clues on where the fuck Kristoff is and what the fuck Kristoff is doing. We are in the process of trying to figure out uh, what the fuck Alchemist tools would go for as well in fiction. <laughs> because by the uh, way, GM. Ah, uh, it's called Alchemist Supplies. It's it not mm. it's not called tools. It's stupid. That's Going forward, is it okay point. if I we just assume that I cast alarm on my backpack every morning so I can get temporary HP for free? Yes, you right. Um <laughs> Alchemist um, would be more expensive because how it's been previously is that with everybody hating a little bit on spell weavers and magic, alchemists have kind of come out and been like, ah, oh, we'll save the day with potions and other shit. Uh, so it is a very large trade, which has turned very elitist, because they don't really want other people doing what they do, because it's fairly simple, which they don't want to, other people to know. Um, so it would go for, I would say, 50 silver, uh, the supplies. I see. Um, I think I can afford that. Small Traveler's Alchemist Kit. Yes. Alchemist Supplies, as it was called, 50. So, cool. Uh, yes, I abrupted you uh, when you were speaking. What did you want to say? Oh. Mr. Morgan, or Jay, depending on whom I speak it to. Um, I thought what? I got. I thought I got to say it. I was just a small oh. traveler's alchemist's kit. Oh. I was just muttering to myself as I was writing it down. All oh, right, right. Cool. It would be after you're done shopping, as you are standing and looking at the inn that would be located just north of you. You would see the name of the inn would be as much as the uh, Unwinding Bowl. It does seem to be an inn and not a tavern, however. Is there a difference? The player asks. Yes, there is a difference. One a of tavern has a restaurant difference. in the bottom, right? Yes, a tavern has a restaurant and usually also where minstrels are playing and, you know, general people are gathering. Do they weren't... still sell alcohol, bro? Probably not. Damn. An inn is just some beds and a dude who distributes the keys to the beds. Yeah. Probably, yes. It's an Airbnb in fancy times. All right. Darius will make his way over to the inn. Never follows. Step inside. Yes. So as you move northward, you see this rather nice looking building. It would be a, a broad... Oh, trying to <laughs> the ghost. In the IRL. Um, you see this uh, like large wooden building. You see very sturdy, not like this regular shit pile of uh, where, you know, just a few planks put together. This is actually nice craftsmanship. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just hearing Ian in the background. Um, yeah, I know. I, I gotta go and tell him to be quiet. Slap him a little yeah. bit on the face. Um, you move forward, you open the, the door, and it glides up without any noise, and uh, on the inside, you do see a few fair tables, maybe seven or so round tables accommodating up to five or so people on each, so it is a fairly yeah. large place. However, no 
tavern or people like people be, are sitting here with their own things and just kind of uh, taking uh, a rest. There would be maybe six patrons, uh, groups, one group of three, one group of two, and a single person sitting here at the moment. The barkeep, or sorry, not the barkeep, it's so used to saying that. The man standing behind the counter in the front kind of looks up and kind of nods at you. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, well, looking for runes, I'm assuming. For a couple of nights, I believe, sir. Nine. What are your raids? Ah, uh, well, let's see. What we're saying now. There is a, a lot of travelers at the moment, and uh, the rates would be what is underneath here. Uh, for sleeping, it would be a silver 20 copper a night. Which you would know would correspond to, like, a good living. Hmm. Those private quarters or public housing? Or, you know, public, but uh, larger housing. Like sleeping uh, in one no, room with they, a they would be room, uh, singular hmm. rooms. Per person oh. or for the all of us? Uh, per person, sir. Just making sure. Uh, we're not some uh, wretched shit house where, you know, you'll find fleas in your mattresses and your belongings gone in the morning. Fortunately, Take... we've slept in very rough places of late. Uh, good night's sleep will do as well. <laughs> Agreed. I take out a silver and 20 copper and hand at it to him. At the mention of uh, slept in very oh. rough places, I, I actually just a little bit like <laughs> scoff a little bit under my breath and just like mm. <laughs> and just immediately regretting it. But uh, just as you, as you do it, I'm like and then uh, no. <laughs> Four rooms then for the for the good sirs. Uh, there would be a uh, a premium price, if you would like, I could arrange fresh bread and uh, some butter in the morning, if you would want, uh, for an additional 75 copper. That seems reasonable to me. Sounds oh, delicious. I yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I gave him 75 uh, copper in addition to the room price. Yep. As well. That's a very annoying price, one silver and 95 copper, and so not two. <laughs> um, so he kind of nods. Um, you can uh, write... Uh, on a, a he kind of puts out a um, <clears throat> small sheet of paper with a pen next to it. Uh, just write uh, what room numbers you are in and what time you want the breakfast. And I'll make sure it is here, steaming hot from the bakery upriver. So I look to him and like, what room numbers are we in? Ha! Uh, yeah, kind of <laughs> turn around and kind of... Uh, second floor, number 37, 38, 42, and 46. I wrote down my number. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Can I nods? Would you want to go up now, or are you looking to do other things? Yeah, I'll probably go up. Yep. Just to, to scout it and make sure what the key works and all that. What time of day is it? It would be like 11 in the morning. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> two very different answers there. 11 in the morning. 11 a.m. Yeah. So... As you kind of use check in your rooms, very nice, maybe like six foot by six foot or so. Uh, sorry, it's not six foot by six, foot. that's extremely small. Uh, but like enough to accommodate for a bed, a nightstand. There is a small locker for your clothes, uh, which seems just like there for the nice. You would assume that there probably would be like even larger and nicer rooms, but this is definitely a nice room and it has a very fluffy mattress with a nice uh, quilt that you can use as well. And of course, there is space underneath the bed for Kevin. <clears throat> uh, but I'll place my uh, unicorn uh, glass uh, thing right in the uh, in the chest. Or, yep. uh, or actually, no. Uh, I'll put it uh, underneath the bed, yes. Yep. I'll put it underneath <laughs> the bed and slide it under because that's where people won't ex expect yep. it to be. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jairus is going to be paranoid, or maybe it's just out of habit. Spend a few minutes casting alarm on the entrance to his door. Sure. At this point, we could probably just add, and I cast alarm to the end of every sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. If there is time, Jairus will be casting Who alarm. Who would have assumed there would be a paranoid <laughs> wizard among us? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> 
How much for the extra alarm service uh, at this hotel? <laughs> In any case, uh, okay. Garrus, after seeing the accommodations, seemed fine. Run back downstairs, talk to yep. me, and keep a bit. Yeah, so, sure. I also go yeah. down back downstairs. Same. Yeah, you will reconvene about ten minutes or so yeah. after having you know just taken a short rest and been able to place your belongings, lock your rooms, make sure that the there's no things going through. Oh, I'm gonna have so fun whenever the, you know rats pass through the door and such, and you just feel mm -hmm. the alarm going off. You're like, no, <laughs> somebody <laughs> is in my room. Um, <laughs> um, um, rooms were accommodating. I hope. Hi. Very nice, especially after traveling Good. so long. Hmm. Uh, where are you coming from? Uh, uh, from the southeast, right? West. Yeah, right. Southwest, sorry, sorry. Southwest, yeah. Hmm. Ah, uh, from the Commonwealth, then. Uh, you seem not to be... He kind of looks at you. None of you are from the Commonwealth, though, uh, hmm. travelers. I assume... Do I? Of a sort. Hmm. We're actually looking for a friend here that we are supposed to meet up with. A man by the name of Christoph. Pretty upbeat. Tends to be pretty good with the bow. Does that sound familiar to you at all? Can I... No, uh, not one that has stepped in. Is he a local? No, no, he's from... He's from Otwick. Ah, uh, well, unless he has uh, accommodation in the form of a permanent house or friends, uh, there's only my place or one of the four other taverns. Uh, I suppose there is the Adventuring Guild, if he's one of those, or, a or if he's been able to have been lodged in there. Uh, well, he may have hired their services. It's a good yeah, place to um, start. Down in the uh, the living quarters, uh, just across the river, you'll see a massive windmill. Uh, you can't miss the houses. There is a small hill in the center of all of the houses. Uh, they have set up shop there. We'll take a look. Hmm. Uh, on an offset, the ghosts or whatever problems that you've been dealing with, there hasn't been a sudden uptick of any activity of late, has there? I, I wouldn't know. Uh, there's the notice board that gets updated, I believe. It should still be one outside there on the uh, square, and I believe that it is the, the adventure skill that have the authority to, to change things there. Hmm. Might be wise to check the adventure skill in general. Could always use a bit more silver. Coin does not harm. No, no. You kind of see, like, he kind of forgets himself for a moment as he says that and then just <clears throat> goes quiet again. Hmm. Okay, sounds like we're heading to the Adventurer's Guild. Yeah. Sounds like it. Okay. Do we, should we ask around town first just to make sure that Kristoff isn't secretly hiding in the house next door? <laughs> <laughs> As you're saying this, he would kind of direct you to the other taverns. Um, there would be up here called the Lookout. There would be two inside here. And then there would be one. Uh, let me double check. One up here as well. Regardless, uh, do you want to head over to the Adventure Guild then? Sounds I think it's like a good it. place to start, yeah. Sorry if I'm taking over and telling you guys uh, where you should be heading. We're going to start knocking on random houses yeah. until we get to <laughs> <laughs> oh, the worst nightmare. Later. <laughs> What's your name? What do you do? <laughs> do you have a you few need... minutes to talk about... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember any of your pantheon. No. It, it, uh, it you step outside into the, the morning lights and head westward over the bridge. As you are like walking over again, you see upriver. There are a bunch of various uh, what's workshops, I believe is the right word. There's like sawmills, there's again smithies, foundries. There's leather and blah, 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 that are utilizing mm -hmm. the power of this water that just keeps gushing down. You do see the two larger windmills as well, and the fields that are, like, accommodating them. Um, there would be people that are currently, like, walking outside. Everything is kind of sloping down towards this way. You would see off in the distance. Sorry? We don't see that map. 
Oh, you're not on there. Sorry. I'm just kind of <laughs> blop, blop, blop. That is yeah, a good so, point. <laughs> yeah, so you would see a castle off in the uh, south, and also, like, over here, probably, like, as you are on elevation at the moment, you would see uh, a couple of very nice-looking larger buildings out here as well. Uh, the map is to scale, so we are going to be traveling about two kilometers to get to the adventure in guild. Mm -hmm. And as you step over the river, the ground underneath you changed from this like very nice kept grass where not a lot of people are walking except for road to just like footprints all over the place, like people walking forwards and backwards and uh, the grass doesn't have any chance to grow and to uh, become nice. And uh, you see a lot of people walking. You would know that the city has like, probably like five ish thousand people living here, and most of them mm. seem to be situated down here. Hmm. You walk in between all of the buildings, and you know you get catcalled here and there of uh, people wanting you to step into their house and you know sell you shit. You know trench coats being open, and do you want some daggers? <laughs> um, and just. That's people... an evil four, four style. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you see like people walking with their uh, rakes and their hoes uh, on, and I mean like the uh, the tool hoe, yeah. not something yeah. else. Now, um... <laughs> sorry, bad joke. Um, they seem to be a lot of farmers, but they there seem also to be a a decent variety of people who don't have a lot, and that is like the general consensus in. Asher, right, where people are fucking poor at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. You managed to come to the center of all of these like sprawling buildings that doesn't really seem to have any cohesion to them. They just seem to be spotted down where people have ever come to be. And see a larger stone building set atop of the uh, hill where uh, there seems to be a person sitting atop of the building as well, kind of looking out on the people would probably even spot you as you're coming there before you kind of look up and see hmm. somebody looking down at you. <clears throat> you move up the stairs, and as you do, you see the person stand up on the roof, kind of glide down the tiles and jump the probably 15 foot down and just kind of just land on one uh, leg very lightly and kind of look at you. Hello. Adventurous, I can see. Sort of give a nod. Ouch. That did not look like a very pleasant fall. Oh, no, it is very easy when you uh, know how to handle yourself in the air. Did I recognize any spells that were being cast as he fell down? You would know about the, uh, like, the Featherfall spell, and I assume that, like, it didn't look like... There was a cast of it, but it was a very similar look to, like, the gliding down. Gotcha. Um, sorry to just, you know, cut you off, but I couldn't help but spot you down there in the masses. Anything particular of it is that you, uh... We're not buying anything today. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm not uh, looking to sell anything. I, I am... Keeper would be wrong to say, but I look after... He kind of gestures to everything behind him. The guild here in River Verge, and uh, seeing that you were heading towards, I wanted to talk to you before you stepped in. Make sure that you're not up to, you know, any evil, or that you're, you know, scouted if you have talent early, and can be put to work where needed. Unless, of course, you already have things to do. A wise precaution to take. We are somewhat in a hurry, but no. while we have your ear, if you are the head of the guild, a man may have come through here recently, hopefully going by the name of Christoph, friend of ours. You wouldn't happen to have seen him lately, have you? Mm, give him a quick I, description. I don't of what name he name like, well, says, uh, yeah, so g give him the description yeah. instead. <laughs> Let me look up what Kristoff looks like. <laughs> yeah, you have a you picture on it. <laughs> Redhead man, fairly stout, tends to be fairly good with a bow. Hmm. There was a red-haired man. I didn't have the pleasure of speaking to him, though. 
I believe that he spoke to Elias. Uh, I you. blow past him and make my way <laughs> towards the front door on hearing him. Kind of like looks at you, this huh. ill mannered fellow. Uh, sorry, I'm Please. not going to keep. Apologies, Apologies for him. We are quite in a hurry. On his part. Kind of smiles. It's good to meet you. Navin is name. He kind of looks and uh, extends his hand. Yeah. Nice. Take it. A pleasure. We must nice. catch up with our friend. <laughs> yep. You okay. rush past. And uh, you come into the like foreground where there's a fountain, little park, shit. And you see, there's like this is apparently you know the main hall. You go to it. There's these like massive double doors where there is a simple smaller door on the left side which you can uh, see is currently standing open. You hear some light shatting from the inside, and as you kind of storm in, you get the the like slight blindness that you do sometimes going from being outside in the light. To going inside and you're standing there and blinking furiously trying to see mm -hmm. and like the room just goes silent for a bit as they see you and like wait that patiently uh, hurtful time for it to take you <laughs> and i like, get the blindness out of your face and like everybody like probably 11 or so people are currently just sitting and watching you everybody has stopped their conversations <laughs> waiting expectantly has anyone seen elias <laughs> <laughs> you hear like <laughs> you hear from the background he is here you are Elias yes I will make my way over to him yep. you make your way over like you take a few steps in and you like hit your thigh in one of the tables nearby because you can't see it it's just like <laughs> and like you hear like <laughs> in the crowd as people go back to talking and then the others you come in just as you see him like hit the table uh you wait make your way over to the left hand side uh to this room and uh, this is a very large man um, you almost get the impression of like simple the first thing you see shaved head uh, just very long face like almost sits with the mouth open eyes just not focusing on anything uh, very large nose that's been broken probably as many times as he's like old and he kind of looks at you sorry for bothering you there was a man you spoke of just too recently red hair could you describe him to me too? so i know if that was the appropriate person that i'm looking for at least so i'm told uh, red hair uh, yeah man Equally size of him. I uh, spoke with a bit of accents, uh, a little bit like uh, nobles. Um, very What kind. did he have you do? What was he here for? When did you last see him? Tell me everything you know. Uh, uh, you see him getting barraged <laughs> by all of these questions, <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, What questions Love. do you want me to answer first? All of them, quickly. Please, just whatever comes to your mind. I have forgotten them. Sorry. <laughs> when did you Let's meet start him? with when did you see him last? Uh, that was... I met him first, maybe... Three weeks... Two weeks ago. Uh, I saw him last... Five days ago. Do you where know was... where he was going? Yes. Where? I I told him not to, but he was heading to the Wailing Woods. Uh, I had him meet with with the uh, other few fellows that did some mercenary work that he took with him. Uh, Were they accomplished? No. Well, yes, but not in the line of work we do. Why did he hire them then? Shady business, shady deals. We 
Wailing Woods, where is that? It's the large woods northwest, but you, you mustn't go. More specifically, where in the Wailing Woods? He gives a big shrug. He was doing some planning and going to meet someone. I I set him up with with a contact of mine. He might know better if he's still here. Contact him. We need to get a hold of him as soon as possible. I lay five silver on the table. He kind of looks and kind of nods. Uh, he kind of looks down on his plate that he was enjoying. Can I finish now. my meal? <laughs> now, quickly. There's I, I no time to waste. I, I, I know you and you have put chump change on my table and you have shown me no, silver on the table. You have shown me no kindness, sir. I, I'm not feeling very obliged to helping you. Please forgive my associate. He is very concerned for an old and close personal friend. You know how those are meant or I, I'm How going to become distraught. And then I'm going to talk to my contact. You you can wait somewhere else. He kind of gestures to the rest of the uh, foyer. I sigh to myself, kind of just sit back in a chair dejected and start tapping the table. It's really good to learn that patience is the better part of tact. Absolutely. Did you sit down next to him, by the way? <laughs> Just in you... the chair that I'm in, basically. <laughs> okay, so like he would look at you. See the glares, stand up, find somewhere else. It would be glare more like a you're really doing this <laughs> kind of there. Um, but he finishes whatever it is what that he was eating, and then you see him stand up and uh, leave. Is there anything you want to do in the meantime? Um, I think I would like to, I don't know, talk to, uh, not Garris, but uh, to Navin, I think, mm, yeah. in private, and just, um, and just like, uh, just ask him very privately, and just, um, uh, I, 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 I don't really understand, but this, this person we're lo looking for what who, who is he he is a I think friend is probably wrong for me to say but an ally of sorts me and him we have worked somewhat to find out more about these dark forces and oh. I don't know him that well to say that he is a friend but he is to be trusted for sure May I just intervene here a yeah. little bit? Because I, I think that you have spent like at least four or five months together. Was it that long? Okay. Yes. Like because there. so Yeah, there would definitely be you had, like we have only played like one session with you because you did go like down to the Bargadu Mountains mm -hmm. and to close the trap and everything yeah. and like the whole travel. So I think that like Maybe you don't, but you would have noticed that at least from his point, like you are definitely a friend to be trusted. Yeah, yeah. If we fought together for that long, surely there would be more like more than friends and more than allies. I would say he's proven himself to be on our side at the very least. Um, so we should try and join up with him, learn what he ha he knows, and to try and help him out. And that would only further our cause if we can find him. That is, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just uh, w uh, wondering, that, that's all. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and then I'm just exactly. quiet. Yeah. I will ask as the DM, hmm? you see like very clearly the notice board there in the room, or like outside, would you have checked that as you were waiting? Or I, just yeah. to kind of be efficient? <laughs> yeah, sort of like, you know, like stand around a bit and like, well, and then you like you know go around looking at walls and seeing what's around. I would like to see how much a bottle of the cheapest, strongest alcohol available is. Seems like it'd be good to have for like cleaning how wounds a... or perhaps setting on fire. Like how big of a bottle and how pure alcohol? One of the flasks in my fancy new belt. So like one pint. Um... 
and oh, like just... very flammable and or good for clear cleaning wounds. Yeah, so Where basically cap go. I'm not certain if they have that high alcohol like here. Uh, at the same time, it's an adventure skilled. There might be somebody that has it. Roll me a D hundred, please. Uh, boop. You can say that it's a uh, an ingredient to make the uh, alchemist fire. I suppose a special uh, ingredient for it. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you would find a uh, a small pint for seven silver. I'd like to purchase that. You find these uh, things being set up at the moment, and as you're standing there, let's say that you walked out after 25, 30 minutes, uh, you see Elias kind of coming back. Follow me. Thank you very much, sir. Stand right, up. Sir, now, is it... I apologize, kinda... things are delicate at the moment. <laughs> he takes his like rather large arm, puts you in a headlock, and just knuckles your head a <laughs> little bit. All good and forgiven, he says as he's like dragging you along. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of sigh and go along with it as best as yeah. I can. Um, he leads you out and uh, down to the uh, like myriad of houses, and seemingly like very with ease. This large man is kind of nimbly walking through, and he stops in front of a house, very nondescript house, just and the door doesn't open, but like slides a slip first and he kind of sees and then he mumbles something slide like and it doesn't open but elias walks around the house and kind of tends to come to you as yeah. you're walking uh you see how the uh like imagine a fence like you know uh those poor shitty wooden fences that probably sit between uh buildings in uh, like suburban houses yeah. one of those kind of just swings in mm -hmm. fence gate step. yeah fence gate basically but it's not a gate like it looks like it's an actual wall like small wall you step in to between two of these parts in a very tight cramped space and it like forces the thing like shut and as it clicks and another door like into the building opens and you step inside to a staircase that leads you down into a very dark. And this is like at the point where, fuck this, like we might die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really like this very dark place. But then you just hear him, Miras, are you in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just come down. And uh, a lantern properly shines up, and you can see a very. <sighs> weird working place like regular you know american basement kind of deal with uh, a lot of <sighs> covered over the basements do you think we have <laughs> <laughs> like these sort of, like earth basement almost um that, that's kind of real um earth you see basement. Earth basement. there's no other way to into a martian like, basement <laughs> like, uh, very prepared it seems like he's put over tarps over tables so you can't see whatever's underneath this seems to have been like um, drapes over the wall so that you can't see what's behind he kind of looks at you ah so you are the ones uh, looking for christoph yes yes 
Yes, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. Elias kind of nods. And two, who would be the one at... I think to Navin, he would like whisper, don't offend him. So I give him a, a slight nod, <laughs> like, you know, and then whisper like, yeah. thank you. You see underneath the like in the lamp in the shine of the lantern, you see a, a rather small man. Um, he has a turban, which would be probably of Darian descent. Um, you see this like desert grayish skin on him, and uh, two very intelligent eyes kind of looking at you. Mm, sit, uh, sit. Are there seating places to it sit? Would be like that you could sit on. Okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, so myself you kind of pull one stool out, and there's a little bit of blood on it, uh, probably dried. And so he like sees you looking. He's like, "Ah, I am uh, sorry for the." <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> but uh, your friend, uh, Christoph, yes, mm. yes, yes. I assume hey. that you hired some men out too. Yes. And gave him some information too, which was very pricey. It was a very good deal. However, seeing that you seem to be friends of Elias, I can probably arrange someone to take you to the same place where he should have entered, Forest. How much is your asking price? Uh, for a simple escort like that. Kind of looks at the four of you. I'd say 40 silver. How much for a simple set of directions? Navin just starts by counting out 40 silver and yeah. just putting it on the table. <laughs> you won't ever you get them. there with directions, friend. Yeah, I sort of, like, you know, I sort of putting it on the table and then I realize maybe he wants it in his hand, like, you know, look to him, like. <laughs> no, he kind of, kind of nods there, like, yeah. sees you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there. yeah. I will give Davin the rest of my silver to try and make up for that time. <laughs> Something uh, like 26, I think. Are we talking now, or...? As soon as possible, yes. Now, then. You see him, like, take up a cane from underneath the table and just hit some, like, the, uh, the roof overhead. Yes. You can go out back to the streets. Hmm. Would you mind answering a few questions about why Christoph was here, what he was after? It's that is a good question. He kind of smiles. He didn't tell me much. A very private man. Should be with what he was looking into. Hmm. What's he looking into? How would he trace it? Things that will get you killed if other people knew you were looking into it. Something related to the Shadow film, perhaps. I don't think it is my business to speak. Uh, if you don't find him, you can return and then I can tell you. But for now, let us assume that he is alive and then he can tell you much better than me Betraying my trust I had to him, because I did promise not to further whatever it was that he told me. Then I will not rest for details. Thank you very much for meeting with us under these circumstances. I understand not... that this was fairly hasty. Shrugs hasty sometimes. What is needed? Now, uh, please, uh, make your way. Yes. Let's I stand quickly up and then get up and bow. Just... Yeah. <laughs> I'm quickly out of yeah. there. <laughs> get the blood off your pants, like, oh. <laughs> Could you just all, since you're sitting around the table, just make me a general dexterity check, please, as you kind of are getting up to mm. see if you guys are... <laughs> oh, I'll wait a second to get up just to avoid that dexterity check. <laughs> Hey. No, wait, hold on, why did it oh, not decide to roll? <laughs> so Garrus will pay Navin 19 silver to make up for 
Uh, yeah, you get up very close to making sure that, you know, you're not touching whatever is underneath this tarp on the table. And, uh, yeah, you get out and up. And uh, as you come outside to the street, you see a, like, a very normal John Doe standing there and kind of just nodding to you and bobbing his head. And he starts walking at a rather quick pace. Awesome. He leads you north over the bridge again and through the same um, like trade district, trade square that you were at and north. As you come maybe two kilometers or so outside of the town, he uh, kind of turns to you. Um, let's see. Might have been wise to see how long this journey might have taken before we agreed to undertake it immediately. <laughs> He slight turns and like, um, we will be walking for a day, day and a half, depending mm. on how quick. If you want to run, we might be there by sundown. I would advise running, but it's not my place to speak for the party. No, we should not run in the woods. It's always good to have energy. Oh, no, should no, 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 no. I am not going into the woods. I am showing you where he entered the woods. Mm. We run for tonight, rest the day after on the edges of the woods, and then pick up his trail. Sounds like a plan to me. Sounds sounds good. He kind of just shrugs and like turns and starts running with very light feet and ease. <laughs> he uh, strides at a, a good pace, and uh, as we start this, it's. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like 1 a.m. We have a marathon to run from where we are, so yeah. it's like 42 to 50 kilometers in total, which will take us the entire day and uh, at a fast pace, which the running is. So as you get forward, you know it starts to uh, darken down. Uh, most of you, without problem, like Navin, because you're wearing armor, you're getting yeah. tired at this point. Yeah. Like, but you're still kind of fit. The wizard. Is probably wheezing. <laughs> yeah. Also, probably wheezing. Current Co is like. Constitution, if not strength. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, how much running has Morgan been doing in his life? <laughs> As an archaeologist, long journeys <laughs> are a thing. Yeah, but walking, right? Walking and kind of, you know. Yeah. yeah. The ruins, we gotta get yeah, there. Owen is probably used to very <laughs> short sprints of, you know, getting the fuck out of Dodge. Yes. So, running for a longer time, it's like very annoying. Uh, but the, the man that you've been running with just kind of shows you where there's been like an apparent fire and uh, tent poles as well, mm. where there's been a tent. He entered here and kind of just gestured, good luck. And then with just as Same if means. though he has to <laughs> run, he just turns and starts running again. Yeah. Maybe we Thank should you. ask him what we should <laughs> like, Thank you, sir. <laughs> Maybe we should have asked him what we should expect to find in these woods. I think he would have told you on the way there. Yeah. Um, I think that both our wizardy fellas... I, I keep saying wizards, but it, it's... Yeah, both our intelligence, ar intelligent arcane casters... For all can... intents and purposes, also a wizard. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, as far as I know. Only, I say... Fuck, what would it be? It would be... A religion for this one i think that not history no it wouldn't be a history for this it would be a religion because so yeah <clears throat> so how, how it it is it depends on like should have paid yeah. more attention in sunday school yeah no he would have told you about shit like the the story that i gave you about you know this being cursed and unhallowed ground yeah everything and its mother is, can be, and will be possessed inside this forest. Mm. Uh, you would, yeah, you would probably have heard about the, the regular shit, like crawlers, which are like spirits who crawl on the ground extremely slow, but if they catch up to you, you're kind of fucked. And, sort of like uh, the half a zombie? Possibly, I, I, I don't know. But uh, it's like, if you're ever inside... Make sure that somebody's always kind of on guard for those fuckers because they'll creep up on you. And, mm. you know, if they hit you, you're kind of fucked. Just 
yeah, don't. Mm -hmm. He would talk about like spirit trees. He would talk about vengeful spirit, like just anything that you as a player have heard, you know, in the form of ghost movies and shit. Mm. It's there. Like, so this is yeah. literally walking in to a place, you know, that is haunted. Oh my god. Sarah, the player, I'm just like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope, I don't nope. like this. <laughs> Actually see. Um, <laughs> the reason they call it the Wailing Woods. <laughs> yep. I just thought there were going to be whales in there. <laughs> oh, I did. Um, going to just read you the <clears throat> the description I have. Harpoons. Hmm? Yeah. Um, <laughs> when the goddess of death withdrew herself from the realm, she left all of those she, uh, who would, should die to linger upon all. For centuries, those who should be dead had to live in agony, awaiting the peaceful embrace of love. Once she returned and opened the doors into her halls again, those who had not become angered spirits finally departed this world. The tens of thousands of corpses that now lay scattered across Orba were taken to a lake in the northwestern edge of Giant's Fleet. Around the lake they were buried, all of those that had to endure the age of agony. In the soil that was used to cover the dead, seedlings were planted. The seedlings used the dead as nutrition and grew themselves large, many of them taking shapes after humanoids in agony. As the wind blows through the forest, a symphony created by the wailing of the spirits trapped within the trees can be heard. The sound is beautifully sorrowful, and those that hear it usually uncontrollably start to cry. The forest is not a safe space for the living, for the dead wills them no good. Hashtag freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't like this. Time to make wow. active perception checks every seven, <laughs> seven feet. Let me change the music to something a bit mm. more fitting. I am unfortunately have, gonna have to uh, keep refreshing this one. Well, if, if if we have to walk in there or before we walk in there, I am very hesitant. I would recommend the Death Singer's Dirge. <laughs> Alarms around every corner. <laughs> oh. Doesn't alarm you... consume its material component? Uh, no, I don't think I mean, it, it has. It's not a, a it cast. Uh, sorry, a cost to cast, so it's fine. Uh, what you would see here is uh, probably what this used to be. Uh, Levin can see that with his rival. Hmm. Seven, eight people. There were four tents, a larger fire in the middle. As you check the tracks, you would determine two days or so mm -hmm. since they entered. Tracks are about two days old. You must have been traveling with a larger group, probably half a dozen or so, four tents from what I can tell. Probably a safe place to rest for a while. I'm not sure if you are all as tired as I am, but running that distance was not enjoyable, to say the least. A rest seems wise, but I don't know how good I would sleep in this place. Well, I don't think we'll sleep any any better if we keep going in the direction we're headed. Fair. Reluctant to stop, but I recognize the need for recuperation. Mm. How many of those alarms can you set? As many as I need to, but there isn't a practical purpose beyond one or two, unless we want a larger perimeter to us. I'd say we'd probably need to have someone on watch at all times, especially in these woods where we don't know what we're going to meet or what's going to find us. I'll take first watch. I'll set up a perimeter. I'll spend some time setting an alarm, setting out alarms. And in addition to that, yeah, it only lasts an hour, so I'm not going to bother with it. I start getting uh, like wood and stuff for the fire, so the person who's on guard doesn't have to go, you know, chop wood in the middle of the night. <laughs> what? Does, like, how does this spell really do? Because maybe, just maybe, I should allow that put it. Let's see. So it is eight hours an hour. Yeah, it's not an hour. That's yeah, it's eight hour. hours. Yeah. yeah. But it takes 10 minutes to cast each if you're doing ritual. <laughs> I guess 11 minutes. This yeah. is 10 plus one, right? Yeah.
I'll take the second watch, and then we'll probably need two more unless I'll take we have the shorter third. shifts. Yeah. Okay. As you are, I go ahead, Sarah. Uh, no, um, I, 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 I can, I, I can watch as well. Well, excellent. We know what's ahead of us. As you're sitting here at the very peak of the valley, you know, you've been running uphill for a good half to like maybe two, two and a half kilometers or so. And you're standing here now, like on the edge, and you can see just down into this cauldron of trees. Almost. The trees are incredibly thick to the point where our, like all of you, can probably assume that there will be almost no light even during the day here. And yeah, um, you can probably see in the darkness that is with like no other lights around flickers of light like coming up above the tree tops going back down and you can probably even see the nearest trees the faces that they are like making like these just wretched agonized humanoid faces watching you and as you're standing here on top you can hear from your back the wind kind of pushing up the hill it pushes past you, you know, your cloak kind of fly by down into the uh, valley and you can just hear this like <laughs> kind of deal that is like yeah. every single hair just stands up and most of you, you just feel just the, the tears down as you get a glimpse of the agony that those people must have had to endure like some had to live as like dead or dying for centuries where they were just unable to move unable to do anything trapped within their own minds for such a long time is incomprehensible and now they wander on Orba trying to somehow you know seek revenge for the pain that was caused upon them to whoever dares come close uh I i'm thinking that uh yeah the reaction i had is basically the same that i have and uh, considering you you know uh what happened um i would say i'm definitely experiencing some ptsd right now uh so i am probably very very shaken <laughs> oh my god. And now it tries to sort of not pay too much mind to it and just go about the robotic tasks of, you know, collecting firewood and preparing for the night and, you know, trying oh, to. Oh, how are you scary. collecting the firewood left on my ass? Looking for twigs and branches that have fallen off, I guess? Like, not like inside finding. Or from the. the oh, uh, not inside. Because I think that's like. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Yeah. yeah. True. You don't like, okay, yeah, sure. There will be like a bush that you can find. Uh, it's like very, very sparse, but yeah. you can find one. Yeah, just a small light source. Yep. Destroying one of, de even thinking about destroying one of those trees sounds like a less than stellar idea. <laughs> yeah, probably take too long time as well. So yeah, just start chopping some of it, trying to get it, yeah. like, you know, as much as possible. As paranoid as it seems, it might be a good idea to bring in wood with us, or... Mm. Bring what? When you bring... look on the trees, like, not all of the trees look like agonized humanoids. Well, oh, just some of them look like they're tortured. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's a lot them. better. That yeah. makes it totally okay. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean you're just gardeners. We have two, two of our spellcasters to know uh, kind of light as well, so I mean... Yeah. I don't so think the yes. carrying wood would be worth the hassle. Probably. No. Unless it gets colder, we should be fine if we can... The light will probably be the, the most pressing issue. Hmm. Can I... No, not now. Well, we've got magical lights. The energy of you can't, you can't do anything. Leave <laughs> us alone. 
<laughs> I can have my spirits come out and get you if you don't go in. <laughs> oh, no. um, so what is was number one? Who? Uh, Morgan. Right? Morgan? And Followed I was by? second. No? Navin is second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be number one. <laughs> well, someone no, has to... is... I yeah, vote our Marshall time. class be number one. I vote yeah. Mar Marshall class. Okay. Well, midnight so... is probably the worst time to be up, but yeah, you know, I'll take first if no one else wants Navin, it. Navin, Garris, Morgan, Coven, then. No. All right, sure. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, please roll me a d20. <laughs> I uh, wanna. Um... <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> oh, that's bad for Wet. you that you rolled one together okay what? um you have 11 18 18 and three pick one <laughs> so there's 11. like 11 yeah 11. i vote for 11. <laughs> yeah okay, you vote for 11. do you all of those want to tie it or do you want to follow sure we go 11. fine 11. i'll trust in my role okay it's horrible we're all gonna die As the stars come up on the sky you... <laughs> you have the small fire going that Navin has managed to create. Morgan, Garrett, and Cohen find some comfort underneath the stars in their bedrolls. As oh yeah, Cohen is probably very fine. <laughs> um, Navin sits by, and from now and then, hears the wailing of the woods behind you. Your two hours go by with just more thoughts and paranoia than anything. As you wake up, Garris, he stirs a little bit and uh, takes over. And Are we like next your... to a river, Jim? Mm, Can we drown you... ourselves? <laughs> uh, not, not the way that you ran. You are on the northern end, so no. You can okay. see the river further down. Um, Garris's watch also works out without any issues as he wakes up morgan you wake up and it is it's black i'm assuming that you have light because at this point i think that the fire would start to kind of douse itself yeah i would cast the light spell on something convenient yep. nearby random please draw me a perception why me <laughs> Don't uh, uh, son of a Die. me. I have the worst perception probably. Do you know what would be the worst here? It wouldn't be dying. It would be getting it would be getting possessed without being able to say things. Well. Don't do that either. <laughs> you sit and it takes you a very long time. Like you have this uneasy feeling of just something or someone watching you. And after some time, you kind of manage to, to like look south, and so not into the forest, but on the edge, you would see a uh, spiritual form kind of standing, looking out towards the the rest of giant streets, and it just stands their hair kind of long colors on. Um, what do you, do you call it? Unidentifiable because it's a fucking spirit. But the long hair kind of just flows in the wind. And as you like watch it, you see it kind of turns to you. And then you blink and she's gone. You're certain that you saw her and certain that something is watching you. But at the same time, your mind can be playing you tricks. Would you say something? Wait, Karen, or would you keep it to yourself? I would. I would say that. Um, keep a close watch. My eyes might be playing tricks on me, but as long as we're near those woods, I don't think we will ever be alone. After about 
70 minutes of your watch, you can see the first rays of sun rising in the west. As morning comes, you have all managed the night, and if you've had anything unspent or, spe or spent, you can take it back by the normal rules, and uh, we have survived the night. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> Waking up, Garrus, using his new cartographer's tools, would take careful note of the position they are in order mm -hmm. to actually get a feel for where they are within the woods as they're traveling yep. through. Oh. I will I also like... extend the range on alarm to 20 feet instead of just the backpack, if that's all right. <laughs> so I can have a moving alarm. I'm not mm. sure if that's appropriate. Okay. <laughs> I'll just take my free HP. Yep. Gavin, could you please throw me a uh, survival? As the... Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> the tired in the morning. <clears throat> yep. It takes you a good 19 minutes before you just find the tracks going in. Yeah. Oh. Um, you quite quickly notice that so kind of backtracking a little bit when you were traveling with Christoph, mm. he would have had you learn a special way of like walking that would be very beneficial for, you know, when you can't speak and also just being able to find your way back, which would be leaving not footprints per se, but just very visible tracks. If you know what you're looking for in the ground mm. that to like the untrained eye would just look like nothing. Yeah. And it would also be the point of uh, if there's ever two feet next to each other, if the left foot would be like set ahead of the right foot, it would mean danger ahead. If it means like the other way around, it would mean like area cleared. Mm. It's like a um, signage essentially for, exactly. for hunters. Yeah. yeah. So he would have had you like learn that as you were traveling together and you mm -hmm. would probably have that kind of set in yourself almost as well when yeah. you're walking. And you would see that uh, the others that were with him have stopped like making tracks the moment they go into the forest. So it's mm. only his footprints that you, as like his his friend or somebody that has been taught this, yeah. can rather easily follow. Yeah. It will still like take you some time because you're not as a skilled tracker as he is, but you can follow it. Yeah. And if he has done this, it also means like it's an easy way to go back as long as you don't get straight off of this path. Yeah, and as long as it's not too dark and you don't lose the tracks, essentially, or mm -hmm. get confused. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sort I... of give the rundown to everyone. I was like, yeah, the, the tracks here have... There are some signs left by one of them, presumably Christoph, but not the others. If we follow the tracks, we should be fine. There are some warning signs sometimes left by, but hopefully it will give us a hint if there's anything dangerous up ahead they know of. Uh, Let's it's go. small comfort, but better than not. Mm. Um, as we start walking towards there, I would definitely actually grab Morgan <laughs> and pull him uh, uh, um, a little bit from the others and just like... Uh, um, does that mean that I am... am I, I don't know. Do, do you un, do you know what's gonna happen if I step in there? I because of what happened to, to me. I I I I I'm I don't know if I'm alive or if I. Uh, I mean I I I I I trust you, but I. Arcana check question mark. I mean, at I... this point, unfortunately, whatever you think and can think of is whatever Garrus would be able to uh, draw as conclusions as well. Well, Garrus isn't in this. Sorry. Yeah. I can't say I know for certain. I don't think. 
I don't think it will do much good to worry. Uh, sh sure. I... No, uh, no, no, uh, uh, of course. Um, yep, yep, wait, yep. Uh, and I start, I... start moving. <laughs> <laughs> Almost peeing my pants while doing it, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we start I following the tracks. Would like another survival mm -hmm. as you are progressing. Come on, chat, give us my, give us inspiration. Can, can I, I give mean, him so my inspiration? <laughs> is that an option that... I can do? Yes, you can so that is actually a thing that you can do. So if you have a Tim inspiration, you can give that <laughs> to other players as well in certain circumstances where we're making like a team effort or there's like very mm. special where I can allow it. Um, Use the D6, please. <laughs> <laughs> so just before you do that, I want to explain something to you, which I think that I do differently from other G GMs that you might have played with before. So seldomly when it comes to things like this, there is a fail and there is a success. It's only about how long time it takes. So if he would have rolled a very shitty roll like the fight, it would take a shit ton of time, meaning that more danger can pass. Yeah. The higher you roll, the easier it is to follow in this case. Uh, so, sure, you, you like just so that you know that in these cases, it's not always if you roll bad, you fuck up. It's less backtracking and like, oh shit, we have to double back because exactly. I lost a trail. Yeah. I think that uh, he still wants you to roll the d6 though. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, you can yeah. choose to roll it after, right? Or yes. when you see it. So you, you see mean, the you, you can make the call. The 17 is a really good roll. Uh, yeah, but I don't really want to spend more time in the front. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> think 17's pretty good and wasting uh, a d6 isn't uh, good. Sure. Uh, okay. I'll keep well, my d6 uh, for yeah, yeah, you keep it. You keep it. We okay. might need it some, 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 yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll keep my d6 <laughs> for when we start yeah. raising, rolling yeah. Christmas saves. How's that? Yeah. Well, that, that seems important. Yeah. Yep, I have put something. Garrett's asked about the river before, and yeah. uh, it seems to be one of those where it's, you know, as I was explaining, there's a hillside that goes up. It seems like the river comes out like somewhere in the middle of that hillside, kind of flowing down towards River Verge. And the tracks lead you. So if you are, since you do have a map, I will actually move you over to just kind of quickly. We could have used the smaller one as well, but if you zoom in a little bit on the Wailing Woods and River Verge, here, sorry, that's the wrong one. Here, um, you would have. Oh no, don't. You would have come out here, and then mm -hmm. like north. So you were somewhere up here. Yeah. When ended, and then the tracks take you southwest. Mm. After, like entering this forest, again, like you all are just uneasy, on edge. Feeling as if though you're being watched, feeling that around every corner there is something Tim is hiccuping that is going to kill you. But it's generally rather like easy. Sure, it's dark, it's gloomy, but except for the trees that look like you know, agonized humanoids, it's as of this point, very much like another forest. Hmm. You're following these tracks, and again, it's quite remarkable at how adept the other people are at hiding their steps. They seem to be very good at whatever it is that they're doing, apparently. Hmm. Um, you soon hear the rush of water somewhere in front of you. Hmm. And as you come to <sighs> clearing is too much of quality, but it's a little bit sparser trees of where you are um you would see that there is a crevice where the river is running like past you and mm. the tracks are going straight towards a uh, <laughs> bridge which mm. is like just a few logs put down so that you can yeah. walk over them as you are approaching here uh, you start hearing moans. Oh my god. Yeah. I think I sort of stop, crouch down, and just like take a second to listen. And then look at the group. It's like, 
hear that right? I am going to cast uh, protection from good and evil on Nevin. Nice. Good spell to have gotten coming into this place. That was like one of the uh, mm. the best. <laughs> um, you would see, like on this, like the the way the thing is that like you hear the most, mm. you hear everything, and but you see nothing. No you, like, source. You're yeah. looking around, you're looking around, and then probably Cohen because he's got the highest passive perception points towards the crevice. Yeah. As you see, just a hand coming up. And then another hand. Oh no! And then, like out of the crevice, there's like six or seven of these ghastly-looking crawlers. And mm. before we do this fight, we are going to take another short break <laughs> and catch up. <laughs> are they corporeal? Sorry? Are they corporeal? Y you know, <laughs> uh, the, oh. it's a, you know. Is the answer for that? We'll take that when uh, <laughs> okay. when we're back. <laughs> don't, don't go anywhere. We, we I don't like it. Right. I don't like any of it. Well, fun campaign. I enjoyed playing.
and welcome back to the last part of today's stream where <laughs> we hopefully the players won't be dying so everybody should be on this side of the screen where we are approaching and uh, you should all see at the edge of your visions these crawlers coming over the edge of the crevice now how I do things in my games is that whenever somebody sees a new monster or like a new monster, <clears throat> we get a role and the role is appropriate to whatever kind of the monster is. Since these are undead, everybody can roll me a religion and well, then history because like no. the age of agony is part of the history of no. the world. <laughs> so this <laughs> is knowledge about the history. monsters themselves oh my God. and <clears throat> how it works is that between Thank 15... you, dice gods. <laughs> oh wait, no, wrong button. It's fine. It's a crit fail. Wow, two crit fails. Um, <laughs> getting them out now. Uh, so how this I works said. is that uh, between fifteen and twenty, you get one meta gaming. Sorry, fifteen and nineteen, you get one meta gaming question that your character would never be able to share to the players. Between twenty and twenty and above, you get two meta gaming questions, and on a crit, you would get three. So Garrus knows that these are crawlers, which are the subtype undead and you get one question that you can ask as a player as then your character would know about these ones what is the most dangerous aspect of these creatures or is that too broad? <laughs> i think that would be like too broad but i think that at the same time no i think i can tell you this. so what you would know about the crawlers is that uh they are extremely slow but if they catch up to you you're kind of fucked and i think that's uh kind of the thing uh, that you would know and be able to share with uh the party so what we're going to do is we are going to be rolling of the initiative oh boy uh, is there music by the way there should be i think it's just yeah, very yeah. loud but i'm about okay. to turn over to well, the battle music. Uh -huh. Turns out the crawlers actually have a speed of 70. These are music <laughs> ones. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad I cast that on Mather when I did. <laughs> <laughs> Won't protect me from the evil initiative rolls, but... <laughs> I just can't roll above 10 today. Nope, Listen, you don't need you're to. gonna roll like three natural 20s in a row, Avery. If you spend the crappy karma on the bad rolls, on rolls that don't matter. Uh, holy shit. Roll, right. Tim, I, I don't think I've rolled above didn't... six today, actually. It didn't add me. Yeah, I'll, I'll add you. You can always pick your token and roll again and just add the previous number. Oh, I can? Oh, I guess Wait. it was technically a seven. Let's calculate the optimal place to so put this I want you to, uh, to stop crying that you're rolling bad, and I want you to look on my initiatives. No, that's well, just are. what they are, man. Oh, okay, yeah. never mind. They are crawlers, they're not runners. I mean, it makes yeah. sense that they'd have low dexterity. Uh, yes, but also look at those numbers. Beautiful. Sweet numbers. Okay, but with them from the last session. <laughs> Too many crits cool. for one person. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is so bad that, that I have it all in a bunch, basically. Uh, Garrus, you share this knowledge with your friends that uh, they are slow, but uh, don't let them catch up to you. <clears throat> you are then the first one to act after spreading this information. Go ahead. In that case, then, I'm looking for... Is there a way that I can set up a shatter, which has a 10-foot radius, to hit all these four crawlers at once. Nope, since it's 10 foot radius and it's clearly 30 foot between them. Damn. Well, if it's 10, yeah, that's a fair point. All right. In that case, I'm going to set up a shatter at this point here, or rather at this point here, somewhere in this area where I can hit the all of these crawlers at once. That's all so right. aim at the middle one, essentially. Yeah, and try not to blow up the bridge while I'm at it. Okay, so basically, the <gasps> but shit, the furthest is that one. Yep. Okay. I just had a thought about how this could go. Ooh. Better. Ooh 
raise a hand, basically get the uh, arcane focus, weave the spells, and then just have it blast off. You see that um, two of them seems to be affected more than uh, the others. However, the ethereal forms that they are don't seem to be caring too much about it. Uh, but these two on the edge it seems bloodied already after that first initial spell. Any movement? Bonus action? Away! Run away! Just get distance. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Try to avoid the creepy tree there, but uh, that'll end my turn. Yeah. Might have wanted a uh, bigger battle mat. Nah, we don't need it. I mean... You don't probably. need it. You can always run in other directions later. <laughs> split the party! Yay! <laughs> no, don't split the party. Yeah, that this one that. seems to be using literally all of its movement you mm. to get up here. Did I skip you? Yes, you skipped Aww. me, Mr. Yes, uh, go uh, ahead. Keep doing that. <laughs> I'll no. put him back in his place. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Cohen. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Eldritch, uh, Eldritch Blast. Go ahead. Uh, Which on, one? Uh, uh, that one. Or that yep. one. That, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, you can't say it doesn't matter. You have to choose. Okay, yeah. Uh, on that one. Okay. 17. It hits yeah. and... Do you smack out? Oh, mm. So, the weird thing about these are is that they are technically prone all the time, and from the range and from the part like that they're crawling up, I do need you to roll with disadvantage. Actually, God damn it. yep, still hit eight yeah. damage, and the force damage hits it in the uh, the like face area because as it's crawling, that's literally the only part that you can see. And movement bonus action. Yeah. Running away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then away. <laughs> this thing gets up to Navin, ends its turn. Morgan. Hmm. I am going to. Um. Let's see. What is the description of that? Real quick. I am. <laughs> Um, I am going to cast... Yeah, that's how it works. Okay, I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Hoping that these and things... I'm going to like cast it. it on this one that is really close, uncomfortably close to Navin. What do you mean uncomfortably close? He's just getting getting up in there. Just say hello. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say so, that's uncomfortably close. Yeah, wisdom saving throw, <laughs> you have a DC of 14, correct? Um, hold on, let me call the spell card. Yep. It succeeds and thus only takes a very small portion of the damage. Uh, you are uncertain if it takes the full damage from the sidekick at first glance. Movement. Um, five, ten, fifteen, ten, ten, ten. You should definitely have had uh, made a big enough of this. Let's say that there's a, a wall of force around here, so you can't move outside. Navin. <laughs> uh, uh, Navin's now. Sort of I'm asking looks, just before. Yeah. yeah. You as a person, do you know how protect evil and good works that has been cast upon you? Uh, not at the top of my head. No. Okay. So uh... it basically. You go ahead, since you're, yeah. you're the so, one cast. Bell cast, tell us. I'm not sure if Nav if there would be time to explain it to the character, but ah, protection yeah. from evil of uh, You've been and working good for like does... two and a half hours. Fair enough. It does two things. First and foremost, any undead that attacks you will have disadvantage on the attack roll, and you cannot be possessed by the target. If you're already possessed, you get advantage on any saves to be unpossessed. Hmm. Correct. Very nice. And it's aberrations, celestials, elementals, fee, fiends, and undead. Cool. Don't you Go choose, ahead. or is it? I'll check. But, yeah. I think it's all of them. But, no, yeah. certain no certain types of creatures. As long as period. Period. yeah, all of them. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Navin. All right. Uh, yeah. So you see Navin sort of look inside himself, and he activates one of his uh, runes that he has um, as his bonus action. 
And then he will try and attack the creature in front of him. You have advantage because it's pro. Oh, very nice. Uh, and it'll, it'll be one-handed because I have a shield, but... Ooh, that is a good damage. As uh, you yeah. swing down upon this thing, uh, you bring it to death's door. Yeah, but when I when I hit the creature, I want to invoke my second rune, uh, which is okay. my fire rune. So he takes 2d6 damage, but I think he has to six... Uh, oh yeah, he just takes 2d6 damage and then saving throw to see if he gets restrained or not. Doesn't matter since he is now dead. dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. they're crawling on the ground. They yeah. don't look pretty strong. Who died? What? They... Yeah. Oh no, oh. So then I sort of I, I sort of see the one taken down and I see the other one sort of coming, but I back up with shield and hammer, you know, stepping backwards. Okay. One, two, three, four, okay. five, and e one more. Yeah. Okay. And then sort of shielding them like if anyone comes. Yep. Uh, yep. You all back away. They all crawl back down the crevice. Hmm. So we're back to the top of the garret. Hmm. Step forward, 5, 10, 15. I don't see anything. Nope. In that case, Shape Water's range is 60 feet. These yes, things this seem... is also a crevice where you cannot see the water at the moment. And you have no idea how deep it is. Right. You hear the water, but you don't see it. I will... Can Shape Water create difficult terrain? I mean, it can create walls. It's going to cast me two turns to do it. But yeah, eh, I suppose you could also just make a giant sheet of ice. The problem is that... Yeah, you could probably make a giant sheet of ice with it, because it's 5 by 5 Anyway, I'm just going to ready a fireball. At what? The first thing I see that crawls up. At, at okay, that's cool. Come on. Uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll uh... Uh, take what little courage I still have uh, in me and start wa walking a little bit slowly towards there because I want to see okay. it. Yeah, and I want to just hold, uh, if I can, hold Eldritch, uh, Eldritch Blast. I can't say that word. Eldritch Blast. Yeah, just the blast. <laughs> yeah. Moment. Magic goes zip zap. Yeah. Magic goes zip zap. <laughs> zip zap zap. Beep blap blop. Morgan. Um, I am going to move up five, two, fifteen, two, 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 three, here ish. Uh -huh. And I would like to take. What's the range there? Probably more than you need. Oh shit, I'm dragging you. Oops, sorry. Um, I probably can't throw that far. Um, I'm going to get one of the flasks of oil and stuff a scrap of cloth in it and get ready to use prestidigitation to light that on fire. Okay, sure. And I'm going to basically ready the action. Can I ready the action to do that or would it be the act of stuffing the cloth in be my action? <sighs> I think that you can do that as a bonus action. Can I object interaction pull out and then bonus action cloth? Cool. So but I would like to be ready to heave that bottle at anything. You can't light it on fire and heave it. Because prestidigitation is an action. Okay, so I will prepare the thing with prestidigitation and then I can snap it out if I need to. Okay, so what is the go off? Like, are you, or are you casting prestidigitation this turn and tossing it next turn? Or like, what is the go off? of casting prestidigitation, if you're holding that action. So, well, prestidigitation would be one action, and then throwing it would be a second one, correct? Yes. So yeah, that is why you need two turns for this. prestidigitation now. Okay, so you cast prestidigitation, and then I will say that uh, you have until next turn to throw it. And uh, then we go to that. That's how long a Molotov can steal it. I mean, you took any piece of cloth now, did you not? Usually, yeah. I'm pretty certain that they... Don't they wet the cloth uh, usually with the Molotovs a little bit so that it doesn't go off? So that it's meant to go off as it hits the thing? Well, so no, that... the, it's not an explosive. It's just, act, it acts like a wick. It could, if you don't throw it, it'll burn 
like a candle or a torch because the cloth is burning the fuel, not the cloth itself. Yes, but it's... Cloth burns pretty quickly, especially if it's like linen, because it just says whoosh. And I'm pretty certain that Molotov cocktails don't use whatever cloth that they have available if we're going to get into the technicals. Fair. At least, yeah. So, because you have the ability to press a detection it out next turn, that is why I'm giving you one turn. Because this yeah, is literally sense. just you making something quick. Now, uh, I move up to where I was. So, sure. seeing if there's any... I don't see any other creatures, so then I'll probably... Oh take my uh, hammer and like slam it into the dead creature in front of me sure <laughs> you absolutely kill it even more yeah <laughs> um then they come back and they start swarming yeah fireball <sighs> are you not entertained <laughs> Okay. Sheet, firebolts. Oh. That is a 17 to hit for Yep, six. just roll. Four. Sorry. Yes, it seems to be taking the damage. Ooh, the Elder's Blast seems to be specifically powerful as we go back to Garrus. This one. All right. It, yes, I have uh, oh, taken okay. off the HP of it. Can I set up my last shatter so that it hits? All of the ones in this area without injuring these three yes not this one however not that one no then you would hit uh, garris oh. i think uh, area oh. of control is you keep doing that I, I know did i get a sense for if shatter was doing the job like they were uh, I mean, you look at them and they seem me. to be slowed they don't seem to be like taking all of the damage and also you don't know if it's because they made their saves or if it's because they're vulnerable perhaps a combination or... i'm gonna go area of control for now and waste my spell slot okay. i could try to cast cloud of daggers that might actually be really useful but i'm not sure how that would work with conjuration you cast it no, uh, that would be and, uh, it shows up Perhaps it doesn't. Do you have so the question is do you have to have them prepared as well? And I'm assuming I, 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 I prepared them. Because you I, don't I, have I, enough spells at the moment, right? Is that right? right? I, I yeah. have two free spells. One of the free spells is alarm because it's a restful. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I drop it? Yeah, yeah. And the other one that I dropped is uh color spray. Mm -hmm. So I have six spells prepared right now. Wait. Yeah, six spells yes, prepared. In three, yeah, you should have. Yep. One of them has been cloud of daggers. <laughs> Well, yeah. but if I, I'm not going to do a lot of daggers, it's concentration from chatter. And it's a five foot cube. Yep. It is very good in alleyways. Okay. Let's roll again. 3d20s. Oof. Two, three. They all seem to be alive. They all seem to both have passed the save, and you do see that they are resistant to this. Um. You with the 20 on religion, most incorporeal things are resistant to almost literally everything. There's usually two things that works when it comes to material, uh, like martial weapon. It's the cheaper version of crypt stone, and then it's magical weapons. And then it's some instances of like radiant force, and in weird cases, necrotic that they usually take, but it's, it's case by case. Movement. I don't know. Come on. Yeah, I'm um, blast. <laughs> blast. Black. Which one? God damn it. Uh, the, same, the same one, I'm assuming. Yes. You yeah. just barely miss. Like, we're talking, <laughs> like, you hit between its fingers and its hand. That is how close it is. Okay, yeah. But, uh, Anything else? Uh, I'll back away a little bit. Okay, is that where you end your turn? Uh, <laughs> Morgan. Stop laughing like that. <laughs> you have this Molotov cocktail. Do you want to yeet it? Or... I'm going to throw it right between these two. 
Okay, so because you do have a threatening thing and it would be considered a, a, a ranged attack, you will have disadvantage unless you take a five foot step. <gasps> that will use up all of your movement for the round. That will use and up they will movement. probably that... gang up on you on next round. That is quite close. Disengage is an option. They're not very fast. We can just literally keep kiting them as long as we want. To be a bit uh, meta GM. Mm -hmm. So, ah, but then I can't use the fire attack. Um... You can always press a digitization it out. But that would be an mm -hmm. action mm -hmm. that I can't use to disengage. Mm -hmm. You could drop it and then disengage. Dropping an item is a free action. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably won't explode if you just drop it. Yeah. These are good vials. If I vials. hit it with an Eldritch Blast, <laughs> would, if I hit it with an Eldritch Blast, would there still be enough fire? I could for... firebolt it next turn. Yes, okay, so I'm going to drop the bottle at my feet, and then disengage. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a flask there. I yep. A marker would be useful or something, but okay. Okay. Navin. Uh, sort of grab one of his hand axes, throwing it at the one that's uh, to his south, using his uh, quick toss. So throwing disadvantage because of the uh, yeah range yeah yeah go for it uh, let's see uh, and... tell me your thirteen hats the... yeah sorry I'm just looking for my own fucking changes yeah. about yeah, the a, yeah. yes it was it uh, which okay, one were so you hitting the one the one to the very south of me and then it's yep. pl six plus two for the superiority dice yep. And then for my main attack, I'll just the uh, attack uh, one-handed uh, against the guy who's next to me. Okay. Oh, so that's Oof. That's, that's just uh, regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah normal. Yeah. Uh, so it's a whooping two damage. Yeah. And okay. Uh, I will not move from my spot. Mm -hmm. Here's hoping that uh, protection from <laughs> and evil does its job. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you also placed the uh, <laughs> flask of oil here. So, uh, yeah. and that is going to go off in a moment. But, uh, <laughs> get to that. Tim is just going to double check because of the uh, disengage action. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there is a change to it. Um, I'm just going to write that in. It, uh, yeah, I have inspiration to give him a bard. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot. Yeah, we'll we'll take that. Uh, it works this time around, anyways. Uh, disengage is a full round action, uh, so it's both action and bonus action to move. Mm. Uh, but because you dro only dropped it, it doesn't make any difference because you didn't use bonus action or action. Okay, so um, dropping is a free action, not a bonus. Yeah, exactly. It's a free action that you have one of uh, every turn. Um, okay, uh, they are going to one, two, three. Run away from us and uh, leave <laughs> us alone. Don't, don't think two, that's gonna happen. I see them. One, two, oh my three. god! No. Uh, well, I, I will tell you that that flask of oil probably have done quite a lot. Uh, so this guy is dead. Uh, so how this works for flanking, there's four of them now flanking you, which means they have advantage because you're a medium creature, they are have medium creatures, but they do have disadvantage already from the uh, attack or from the protection of evil and good. Yeah. So I will be making these attacks. Um, yay! It's a crit. Get to, uh, no, 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 no. I just say yay as in I get to use them because I actually mm. thought that you would be kiting them. All along. Uh, let's see. We'll do one at a time. So just... I don't like this. Two 17s. 17 hits. Is it hit or is I that know. damage? No, 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 no. That's okay, uh, cool. Uh, I need you to make me. We'll do them one at a time. 
Make yeah. me one constitution saving throw, please. Yep. I can do reduction of some of the damage with the Way of the Mountain feature on one of the attacks. Mm -hmm. So I'll roll first damage. Yeah. Going to look at protection from evil and good real quick. Just it to remind not, myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what were his rolls? 19 for one constitution save. So you take um, 18 points of damage on the first one? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I think I would take the first hit regardless as, as a player. So I'll, okay. I'll do the, use it on the second one. Yeah. You feel that what you are shrugging off mm -hmm. is that you feel this coldness just spreading through your body, and yeah. you feel that if you wouldn't have shrugged that off, you would have been unable to move. Yeah. yeah. And then I need another constitution save. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, add a d6 to that. <laughs> this one I won't allow you to. Because yeah, yeah. It's this after, one, yeah. it's not a team effort. Probably wouldn't be enough anyways. Yeah. Okay, so you will now take the full damage of yeah. these two. Can I use the feature the way at Mountain for the damage reduction, or is that also like part of the paralysis? No, no, you can use it for reduction yeah. because that's one of your thing. Uh, yeah. You can roll me the, the thing, please. Uh, 1d12 plus... Uh, let me just check. It's Corn, plus, I believe. Yes. Just making sure it's plus two. Yeah. Yep. So you reduce 6 of the 23 incoming damage, oh. and you take 17, as yeah, your feet so <laughs> are now frozen to the ground. Ooh. And you have zero movement for the next round. Yep. Garish, before it is your turn. I, I don't want to say that, but... Oh, yes, the one in front of you. Yeah, ha! I don't want to <laughs> I'm too Aww. Awful good. Aww, it misses you. Oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> why did you have to drop it there? Oh, no fun. <laughs> no, the explosion oh, because no, it's gonna oh. hit. It's actually not going to hit because it is underneath the other fuck. Mm. So he is literally going to absorb the damage as this thing blows up and with his 2 HP he is going to die as you just hear this like <laughs> and it just starts burning this corpse and you just hit... <laughs> and Garrus it's your turn screaming I can't really see what's going on I'm going to take 15 feet to move out there see Navin is being flanked by two of these things curse under my breath and I can't do anything else. Fireball this one here, if I can. Yes, that is this one, which looks much more damaged. I will, I will probably kill the one that seems yes. like it would be a good idea to kill. And so probably I will say, However, unfortunately, I'm going to say this: you are 35 feet away. There are roots. These things are prone. You are going to have to use your remaining movement to get closer if you don't want to have disadvantage at yeah. shooting at this. God, I, I really can't afford to get into melee, especially without any spell slots right now. I will take the I will take the chance and hope that with disadvantage I can still hit. Okay, roll. Uh, sorry, Navin. It was good knowing you. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let me look at what that was. That's a twenty-one, which is good. That's a fifteen. Mm. I. Do I you spend know the dice? Hits. You know I will, I will hit it for eight points of fire damage. So eight points, half to four is just the HP it has. So you managed to kill this one too. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I'm gonna you see Navin being completely shit. fucked up. Yeah. What? I'm so you, see, uh, you see Navin being completely fucked up. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I am going yeah. to use a uh, cast healing word. Uh, on him. Uh, so, I'm just going to tell you, uh, just so that you know, like, yeah. casting spells within range of somebody yeah. will get you smacked. What? Oh. Yes. You can't take the action to disengage and then heal it like. You, she can't, but she can't because it's a full action. Exactly. Oh, god damn you can it! Take, you can take a five foot step. However, I will... I... However, but before we do anything, before we do anything, 
Did you get what I wrote to you, Morgan? Hmm? Did Where? you get the whisper? I whispered to Morgan something mm -hmm. that you could share if you want to. I don't have any... Is this in roll 20? Yes. It's a bit up. I'll write it again. I don't... There? Did it go through? Might be because I'm in talk to myself. There we go. I'll write yeah, it again. Yeah, however you're doing it, it's not going... There it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think they can make attacks. Of, how 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 do I phrase yeah, this? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> yeah, you phrase it. Um, they don't seem to be very opportunistic. I don't think you need to be that worried about sneaky claws at the ankles. What? <laughs> yeah, that's all you get. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. Uh, that's all he has. Yeah. <laughs> that's me, Sarah. I don't get it. I'm like, what? <laughs> what you say? Well, yeah, anyway, I'm casting um, second level uh, healing word uh, mm -hmm. to uh, to Navin, and uh, uh, yeah, and then I'm gonna try to inspire him as well. Healing word is a bonus action, unfortunately. Yeah, I can't, I, so and I can't. Inspiration is a bonus action, too. Inspiration is a bonus action, God fucking damn it. Too. Okay. So what you could do is you can try to shoot the fucker at your feet first, and then you can cast whatever it is that you need. That could be a thing. But I can't do that because I can't attack. I can't attack you it. Cantrips, you can shoot. Why, why you can add Eldritch Blast him. He's right at your feet. You I can't? Oh. Yeah, why not? Well, you have this advantage, but it can't start because you have advantage because he's prone, so you just roll a normal one. Well. So, don't mind if I do. Ooh, yeah, nice. don't mind if you do. Just blast this <laughs> thing off. <laughs> uh, you just, yeah, like, I don't... After thinking of just figuring things out, you just, uh, wait, just turn down, just <laughs> yeah. shoot this <laughs> thing into the ground. And then you cast uh, the the spells, I'm assuming, rather than the other way yes, around, so you yes. get smacked. I will be nice since it is new that we're playing with these rules. Navin, you gain it's okay. 11 points of HP. Thank you. Morgan, you can move outside of com your turn of combat. It's all okay. Let's <clears throat> see. Go to move here. Actually, no. I don't actually need to move. I just want to move. So that's ten feet of movement. Oh yeah. And oh, sorry, Jim. Mm hmm. I forgot to move. There. Don't worry about it. Move on. Um, has this one been hit by anything yet? Yes, both of them seem to be damaged. The one on the northern part seems to be more. Damaged. I am going to cast Toll the Necrotic Damage. is not a good idea, Eldritch Blast. My favorite, my favorite spell, Toll the Necrotic Damage. Toll is awesome. Toll is a really good spell. Oh, come Toll. on. <laughs> come on. I hit him. Yeah. yeah. Some no damage is better than no damage. Because you're 25 foot away. And uh, it's prone still. I mean, you are... You almost can't physically miss. So I will redact the damage. But I need you to roll in case you do miss. Sorry, what? You roll again roll. at uh, it, because he's prone. Yes, he's prone. And you're standing so far away that it's, it's a weird angle. So you have disadvantage. How does that work? Well, he's prone, and ranged attack on prone creatures thought... are at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, like, well, he's literally on the ground. And, like, the only thing that is moving is, like, his head. So that is the only thing that you have to shoot on. And in this case, 25 foot is a long distance to be shooting at a tiny human head. I see. You hit him for the one point of damage. Navin, you have uh, now only two of these focus, and one of yeah. them, the northern one, is bloodied. Yeah. I sort of take a deep breath and sort of steady my my body and using my second wind to sort of regain my energies. Uh, 1d10 plus 3. So another 11. Um, oops. Oops, that's not... Uh, and then, sort of, again, getting into the rhythm of, of my body, I sort of move and pace myself to commit more attacks than I would usually do. Mm. And swing right. uh, once on each of them. 
uh, using my action search. Uh, you certain you don't want to kill one? You certain I, you want to commit? No, I, yeah, I think I I I'll I will commit to this. Like I don't like okay. he's being surrounded and he yeah. would be like oh, I'm gonna kill one and like hitting both of them, uh, so, one each. Uh, um, so it's with advantage been... on both rolls because you Ooh, are now. Very nice. Please crit. Uh, very also, nice. isn't, yeah, I'm just checking. Isn't protection from evil and good? Oof, good hit. Uh, a Does... uh, concentration. It is up to ten it minutes. Is. Yeah, but uh, concentration. But it's not. Yeah, it's I not cast on it. you. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. but I'm just uh, figuring out like when it was oh, cast. Yeah. Uh, hit. Nice. And then the other one. Good damage. Let's see. There we go. Hit. Mm, yeah. Very nice. Both. Uh, the northern yeah. one seems to be almost dead. But yeah. Yeah, both of sort them of, are alive. Yeah. Are you still standing? Brace. Still? Yeah, standing, standing, oh, okay. and bracing. Still standing, still. They don't have the intelligence to really know that you need to be uh, 180 degrees. degrees. Yeah. One hit. Mm -hmm. Make me a Constitution saving throw. All no, right. wait. No. No. Tim is I'm frozen. <laughs> Tim is cheating. They have this advantage. Oh, nice. They could still hit. Could still? Nah. <laughs> we might have the first crit failure now. Oh. He bites his friend. <laughs> no, no, no. He spontaneously <laughs> combusts into an orange flame, frantic as You notice as points. both of them come in together to try to like attack you, they like have this moment where you feel like you can literally just step away. <laughs> so you get 20 feet yeah. of free movement that Ooh. you can use. Yeah, I'll move. If you want uh, to yeah, I'll seeing as Cohen is uh, the closest, I'll move towards him, uh, sort of backing up and probably stepping not maybe on the thing that's dead, but yep. standing side and then keeping an eye on them. Garrus. All right. Uh, seeing as how these two are still alive, pop out, bam, pop back. Which one? Uh, the weaker one. Though. Weak one, not one. Yep, you still have a disadvantage at that range. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And it is reduced to ash. Well done. Come on. Um. Oh, giving me an acknowledging <laughs> nod. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, that does inspire uh, me. So <laughs> I do actually take a step forward to. Hmm? protect you, kind of, oh. somehow, and uh, then I'll just uh, cast that, yep. yeah, Eldritch uh, One more step forward, not to have disadvantage in this case. Then I step forward. Oh. <laughs> All right. Shoot. If you hit, oh, how do you want to do this? Hey! I, I, I just like, <laughs> nice. I, I, I look, look back at you and just like, okay, and I, I see that you're like, really hurt, so I just step <laughs> forward and not anything flashy, I just uh, <laughs> 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 nice. We are out nice. of combat. See, that wasn't too bad. No, you just dodge and weave. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you're totally going to put us into a scenario <laughs> where we're herded towards these things and they begin to surround us. No way! Uh, or you walk into somewhere and then they're waiting <laughs> outside. Uh... <laughs> Uh, you can now shout out of character if you want uh, what you learnt, uh, Jay. Well, well, I step up to uh, Navin and uh, I, I, I just um, uh, touch, touch your shoulder and uh, yeah. just uh, I cast Cure Wounds. Hmm? I, do, I wasn't hit. I was never hurt. No, Navin. <laughs> Navin I, I was fucked up pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. 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 Um, these things can't make attacks of opportunity, is what I think he was saying. Oh. They're physically incapable of making attacks of opportunity, so you don't need to take the disengage action or a five-foot step. Oh. They're too slow for those. Mm. Does Garrus hear anything besides the moans of souls, centuries lost? Uh, now it's very quiet. Like, it's basically... Just when the wind is sparking, that seems to be the way that they're able to commune. And because of the, like, valley's location, there is very seldomly wind, uh, at least here in the eastern part that you know. So it's very quiet. 
right? I am going to cautiously, five feet around, make my way up to the edge of the river, keeping my ears peeled if there's anything. Yep. If you nothing happens, I am... Uh, Go ahead. If nothing happens, I'm going to use Shape Water to see if I can't see towards the bottom of the river to make out if there's anything else down there. Ooh. It's a very fast-flowing river, and you were removing five feet. Like, oh, like I'm not moving. removing it. I'm making it more transparent. Yeah, so, so the five feet of water that you make transparent immediately just... Well, it doesn't have... Well, okay, yeah. I am assuming the river is five feet deep, right? Nope. How deep is it? Yeah, you don't know. More than more than five feet, right. I guess. Navin, are you are you alright? I'm not gonna worry about it. Then. A lot better now. Thank you. Um, you did do well. the remains of the crawlers still exist, or the they just kind of fade into etherealness? They would, weirdly enough, still be here. Like they're like fl flickering is the wrong word. But getting more transparent, it seems like, but you're uncertain like this. <sighs> You've heard of ghosts and how, you know, they, ooh, they go back, but they're still here. I would just like to generally investigate and study the remains. Mm -hmm. Do we want to set up camp here? For, I, like... Give me an investigation. I think that's... I don't think we want to set up camp here. I think we should 11th. get across the river, see what we can find there. Take a short break before continuing on. Ah, I know. Catch our breath for sure. Mm. They are like physical as you touch them in most places, but there's other places where like your thing go through and mm -hmm. when you put it out, it's not gooey or icky. They do seem to be incorporeal, but <sighs> Best conclusion, something is still keeping them bound here. Do they have bones? Or Do is it like a... To press your hand into them? <sighs> what does it look like? Like, a, a de Can I have a detailed physical description instead of just general form? Because I was picturing like... Sort of was... like the ghouls from Fallout 4, but translucent and crawling? Yes, I would say that that is uh, a, a good description of them. I would like to take my dagger and just kind of gently poke at it, the, one of the arms, to see what happens. My idea is to perhaps extract one of the shin bones to test on. Mm -hmm. If it's solid material instead of flesh, that might be a useful thing, an incorporeal mm -hmm. solid. Yep. You... Uh... Do some digging and such. You know, just like as you're cutting away, like flesh to get to the bone, and you you know have to remove it. As you push pull the flesh away, it just it's kind of poofs into effects. nothingness. Mm -hmm. It may be when you were ten or so inches away from the body. Hmm. Interesting. My next test would be to attempt this on multiple places on the body to see, like, if it's from the mass or, like, from the skull or heart or something. Seems to be from the mass. It seems to always be about 10 inches. Interesting. No further questions. Okay. Did you want to take a short rest? Is that why I heard? Yeah. In this yeah. Forest. Uh, yeah, but... <laughs> It's always spooky. <laughs> oh, okay. We're taking a short rest. Go ahead. Oh, shit. And we we'll have spell slots now. Yay. How many spell Mana. slots do we get back? After? You get nothing, Mr. Bard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get <laughs> I have you as many as when we started fighting. Any, did you? What? She used a second rep. Uh, oh, healer. yeah, healing word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Word. And, and, healing word. and cure wounds as well. So you have three left? Yeah, it should be three, right? Yeah. No, it should be, yeah, five, four, four left. Yeah. We have nine. Yeah, I yeah. have four. Yeah. Good. So two level one stuff. I mean, you're fine. Yeah. Or one level two. Okay. Um, 
Sure. Uh, you take a short rest, and uh, you're just, you know, enjoying. Do you, any of you have rations? We have yeah, rations for when we yeah. washed up on the beach, I think. I but, want uh, everybody to, at this point, remove two rations from what you have on you, because of yesterday and today. Um, you sit here in the eerily quiet forest, oh, as yeah. Navin probably takes whatever little time he has spared to find the tracks again, make sure that yeah. you're walking the right way. And nothing jumps you, nothing comes out of the forest trying to attack you particularly. Before That's we fun. leave, oh, could yeah. we make out any signs of a struggle around the site that we just fought that wasn't oh. from us? All right, cool. Thanks. Okay. You then make me another survival, please. Normal survival. Can I, like, keep an eye on uh, the surroundings? Because if I'm assuming there, that you are. Yes, <laughs> I, I um, totally am. Um, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so you continue westward and after having crossed the river turns maybe a little bit more south as well um, it's a bit weird why they would have like entered this far north when they're walking southward but mm -hmm. who knows um, your footsteps like there's no footsteps where you find you know the, the two in a row it's just like normal walking and then you suddenly see more footsteps as you're looking on the ground. And it seems like the others have most likely broken formation or something. And it's a bit of a scurry, almost. And because you're like just looking at the footsteps, like very much trying just to figure out what the fuck is going on. Mm. As you then kind of just raise your eye, you see a lot of footsteps having to run around and see struggle. And then you start like looking on the surrounding area and you could see like behind one of the trees in front of to your left you see a hand sticking mm. out you would see like from one of the trees there's a leg hanging down um like you would see a few like meters ahead there's probably a bit of a head that's like almost pushed into the ground. All right, so um, to clarify, GM, these are dismembered body parts, right? Yes. That's unsettling. I sort of point them out, like, like, don't really say anything, just keep looking if there's anything else. Morgan, are those illusionary? Uh, investigation check, question mark. You don't need to. They okay. are absolutely not illusions. I could have done this. Maybe what we set upon ourselves. Maybe they were less skilled or less lucky. A lot of foot tracks. Seems to be a scuffle or some fight. Do any of the body parts have anything like identifying tattoos, jewelry, scars? They are very like bland. There might be a, a tattoo or so on, on the underarm or sorry, forearm of one of them. Um, but and to clarify, GM, these are random body parts. We're not seeing like an arm and then a torso that's scattered like maybe three feet away. These are just ever as if it just as if there was an explosion at the body part mill. Yes, it's yeah. All right. Could you make me another survival, please? Yes. This one with uh, disadvantage. Yeah. Finding the tracks <laughs> we're looking for will be most difficult. Yes. Is there any equipment or just the body parts? Just, I mean, do you want to lift the body parts and look around? <laughs> well, not necessarily. Is is there like shredded clothing, a discarded weapon? Not that weapon? you can see very apparently. You can take time and kind of look around the place if you want. I would like to do that. Okay, so... so I am going to follow and yeah. back him up in case sure. anything... Investigation with advantage. Sorry, what check did you want for that? Investigation with advantage. Cool. Sorry, he <clears> was talking over you. All right, so we'll get... Um... You should have at the top, like, the ability to click advantage. Or maybe it just means not be talking clear enough. Uh, you have advantage because Garrus is helping you. Right. <clears throat> I so, thought I clicked that, but it didn't trigger. Yeah. So, 26. Um, as Navin is kind of searching around, you start properly investigating, kind of getting a picture up in your head. You see large footsteps from something else walking here. Uh, that is like walking over the uh, 
oh. the other footsteps. You would find like, you know, as you walk into like this skull, you know, you see the cloak is kind of sticking up from like underneath the ground. You kind of pull a little bit and like you pull out the part of the spine kind of following up with, with it. Um, there seems to be like, as you're looking, corpse explosions. Like we're talking, these things have been hit very hard by something multiple times. And then probably post mortars, they have been <laughs> tossed aside. No sign of anything, any bite marks around the bones or flesh. Or... You said footprints. What mm -hmm. shape of footprint? That's the weird thing. There's like different sized legs or feet. Okay, but is it like boot shaped or is it no, barefoot shaped or is it paw shaped. shaped? Barefoot shaped. So barefoot shaped and there's one tiny leg and one big nope. leg. Nope. There's three legs. Three legs, are they all the same size? or is No, it... all different size. But vastly, like, one of them very large, one of them much larger than a normal human, and then the last one very small. We conclude this is all from the same creature based on this. Uh... I mean, unless you have two different, like, three different creatures all jumping on one leg, yes, they are from the same creature. I would recommend we leave this area immediately. I and do not want to encounter what this. Navin finally finds Christopher's uh, Christoph's footprints again. And they are leading further in to where you see these large foot tracks have been going. Cool. He so seems to have it. escaped this. You can see in front of you a viney area where like a lot of thorns are laying on the ground and it's becoming difficult terrain to walk in i want a perception from everyone um <clears throat> do the, his footprint no is sorry limp not from everyone from navin and from corwin uh is one quick question about the footprints um does he appear to be limping or does he appear to be walking fine uh is really more of a question for the survivalist, but yeah, like, exactly. Know. I'm wondering if I should give you that information. Would Navin? I mean, Navin would probably have noticed, uh, but no, no, he wouldn't. But you'll see this. You'll see this soon. And none <clears throat> of us know of a three-legged chicken that might. No, <laughs> okay, um, cool. it has human feet, <laughs> which is unsettling. A hundred feet Christmas or so. <laughs> that leg that I said was up in the tree. It's attached to a human who seems to be whole in the tree and it looks like Christoph. Who, who, who saw that? I think Kerwin would see like the as you're like moving you would come to an angle where you would be able to see the shape in the tree like sitting on a branch Oh, so it's alive. You don't know. Okay. It's not moving. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's whole. I, I, I mean, I, I just, uh, just touch whoever is closest and just like, <laughs> just point, you know, showing, point it out for them. Yep. Oh my god. Uh, what? Is that him? Was the one who's closest? You, because the two wizards have been doing other shit. Yeah, yeah. So I I'm gonna just look... refer to you as the two wizards. It's much yeah. easier. <laughs> I sort of stop and I look up. I mean, you're you're like a hundred foot away. Yeah. So it's very hard to say, but like yeah. still, it's the same kind of clothes and everything. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Could be closer. Okay. Very scared, but yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking if we had like a like a signal, like when you're out in the woods with someone, like have mm -hmm. like a whistle oh, you or absolutely something like that. Have. Yeah. But then I yeah. like you see like he is not moving whatsoever. Yeah. But I do the I do the the signal, like the whistle, yeah. I guess. Like I, I can't do whistles. Yeah. Um I wait no for like a yeah. I no do it again. Yeah. 
Mm. Mm, I don't know if it's him. I think we need to go closer. And I start creeping closer. Yeah, same yep. here. What are you doing? Okay, where you are you guys far away? Can we see where you guys are? Or like... Yeah, like they yeah, would okay. probably yeah. be standing a bit in front of you, actually looking yeah. at where the footsteps were. And just yeah. as they have come to the conclusion, we're not going to be here. You know, turning around, <laughs> walking yeah. past you guys almost, yeah. you guys come up to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of point okay. to the shape in the, in the trees. I think that maybe Christoph. Start. Like yep. walking closer, yeah. Yeah. Like trying to find the the closest way to get up, I guess, into the tree. You walk another thirty foot, and then you see like the the red blonde hair, and like you know it's him at that point. Yeah. I do the signal again, like. He seems to be like at the very best unconscious. Yeah. I sort of try to find a rock or something, like a small pebble. Yep. To throw, you cast to a throw. healing word up at him. You throw the rock yeah. and you hit him and you hear a... <laughs> okay, yeah, I, 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 I cast the healing word on him. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Um, so... Okay. Yeah. Christoph! Oh, no, 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 uh, you have yeah, to wait yeah, for this. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> you cast... Oh, I'm so sorry, Sarah. Um, you cast Healing Word, and you just hear him... <laughs> As he, like, wakes <laughs> up and, like, just pain across his face, he, like, falls off the branch. <laughs> And starts falling. Uh, Am I close enough to try to dive and catch him? <laughs> Navi would be close enough to try and catch him. Yeah, I, I try. I obviously try. I you yeah. have. Yeah. Are you, like, I'm pretty it's... sure you can only cast that on yourself. No, no it's no, no, any attack on others as a reaction. Uh, you don't need to, unless you want to. No, if I don't need to, then no. Okay. Yeah. No, I, 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 Navi yeah. is like yeah. close enough to be able to come in and just catch him. Yeah. And. Navin, what you see in his wound is like these like almost buds that are like growing inside him, like these black oh. red buds uh, who seem to have been growing more from the healing energy that oh, no. he received. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, God. No. Christoph. Oh, my God. Um, Christoph. Uh, uh, Navin. Abby, what? What the fuck are you doing here? We came looking for you. Uh, who, who, who? He just like vomits yeah. out, and like you probably see like a few of these seeds as well uh, yeah. on the ground. He's like, it's still here. The open, the abomination. It's still here. I haven't seen it. It might be close. Can, uh, do I recognize these seeds or buds? Like knowledge, would that be nature? Uh, you can draw me an arcana, both of you wizards. Arcana, not nature. Arcana. Just I be grateful. To, oh! Yeah, I try to sort of, you know, cover his wound as best as I can of like yeah. medicine, but it's, you know. Um, there are certain. I try to excise the. Yeah, it can't, can't, can't. Um, Garrus would know like the most of this shit, but Morgan, you also know. Um, there are certain, like, the buds doesn't have to be like it, but there are certain spells that, like, or in some cases plants, that you can curse someone with by planting it inside them and basically turning any healing into damage instead. And that is most likely what has happened here. That something, someone has done this to him. So, like, the only, like, way to heal him is by either a greater restoration or by being able to, like, properly take care of him as a doctor. Neither of which you have access to. 
Get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> you said there were Kristoff's tracks leading deeper into the forest. What the hell caused that if he's here? Is that no, by the way, they led here. No, no, no. Do gotcha. we seriously hear footsteps? Then I'm gonna. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. then I want to. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Can we I like, start you start walking around him. No! Yeah. yeah. No! I start... No! Stop! It's. It's right there, and he points to a uh, a very large tree uh, yeah. in front of you. It's right there. What I came for, I need to get inside. There should be a way inside the tree. Yeah, I start leading him where he wants to go, like propping him we up. Get him out of here. I'll take a look at the tree. Right now, Kristoff needs to leave. We all I'm need going. to leave. I'm no, going. No. No. Oh, you're I'm not going anywhere. It. No. Yeah. Because as you turn around... <laughs> You see, standing 80 or so foot away, this 16 foot tall uh, abomination. <laughs> it is incorporeal, but like you see hands and legs and different heads just sticking out of all parts of it. And it's looking at you and you just hear the and it starts moving towards you, oh. and that is where we are going to end. No! Oh. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> I want to sleep. I can't sleep Damn like this. <laughs> Stop leaving it on cliffhangers. Um. So, quick thing I wanted to mention. Um, yes. What's your uh, just idea for the wizard, other wizard, um, catapult plus Molotov. Ooh, I like it. If you guys practice that shit, I will definitely allow you to do that shit. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> um, we talked about having a second session this week. I am okay when... with Thursday. Thursdays? This, this, Thursday. this Thursday, this Thursday, I can do it. Yeah. What did you yeah. say, Brian? I have a vaccine appointment this Thursday. I'm not sure what it is. I'll check. So okay. I might not be able to make it, but we'll see. I okay. should be able to make it. So yeah, if we can't make Thursday, can we, like, Sunday maybe? Oh, yeah. Easy. De uh, probably. Um, we do have I crappy think, yeah. on this channel, then. Ah. Uh, maybe we'll have to do one which sneakily isn't. <laughs> You'll have to talk to me in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, I know, no. He should do his carpet What I mean is... Yeah. We it might do one like that we just upload to YouTube. Mm. Maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe. Um, but hopefully we can make Thursday. Um, yeah. And then we will get a second session this week. And nice. <laughs> I would just like to uh, thank the people that have been watching and of course ben who is flooding the chat uh, <laughs> like uh, he owns it and uh he's amazing i love it yeah, thank he, you <laughs> he's filled with gummy bears at the moment yes. <laughs> yeah satan's here as well thank you very much for yeah. those of you that do tune in and yes. uh, we will be back either thursday or next week yeah. for the next session where we find out if they can survive the first boss fight. It's the first fucking boss fight, and I'm down at two mana. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> we screwed. It's a good thing we did a short rest at least. <laughs> it was nice knowing all of you. Uh, two mana in the first fight of the adventuring day. <laughs> I wrote a first paid backstory, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Not... Well. Okay, so we're no. gonna leave off the stream now, but uh, Discord will yep. and we'll talk. Yeah. But okay, but thank you everybody for hanging out yep. and uh, please. Thank you very much. This was fun. Next time, um, uh, yeah, we're not gonna raid anybody, so we're just heading out. So <laughs> thank you guys and have a good people. One. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.